It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. And have you ever wondered how Kobe Bryant became an Oscar nominee? Did you even know he's an Oscar nominee? These are the kinds of questions that Cal Fussman gets answered on his podcast. Big questions with Cal Fussman, okay? Uh, best-selling author and Esquire columnist Cal Fussman talks to people who have lived extraordinary lives from Kobe to Dr. Oz to Tim Ferriss, all right? They're really deep, thoughtful conversations, and you'll end up with burning questions answered and a few new ones to think about. Subscribe. Subscribe to Big Questions with Cal Fussman now on your favorite podcast app like Stitcher or Apple Podcast. The question is, is Cal Fussman on loudspeaker? Because I would like Ooh. to know. Uh, did he cut a check, Chris? Yes, he did. Okay, okay, okay. okay. just making make sure. sure. We're not just up sure, here yeah. promoting <laughs> podcasts, okay, <laughs> that he didn't pay for. All right. All right, we get a, we'll get a nice Thank you, Cal Fussman. Coming. Sorry um, I'm late, guys. I... I well, here's the thing. Nobody would know you was late because yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> this is the podcast. You're right. Nobody, you're right. I was on time. Knows. Sorry. Listen, um, uh, I want to say first and foremost, I'm, uh, they, 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 they put a battery in my back right before the mic's phone started. Like, soon as you walked in, they just finished letting me hear Joe Budden's podcast. I listen to Joe Budden's podcast every week anyway, okay. by the way. Salute to Joe Budden. Salute to Rory. Salute to Mal. I listen to their podcast every week. I think it's a very entertaining podcast. Yeah. Um, but I was listening to Mal. They was talking about the Monique interview. Gotcha. On the Breakfast Club, which we'll, which we'll get into in a minute. Yes, and um, you know, I heard Mal say that the Breakfast Club is finished. Like the oh, you know, he said it was over for me, Charlemagne the God. He said it was over for me because Monique came into the Breakfast Club studio and uh -huh. respectfully got me to fuck up out of here. And now my name is Lenard. Let's talk analytics for a goddamn second, Mal. Because I, I and I was waiting for. I like a good hot take. I love a great hot take. I love. What is his hot take? That, I, I that don't was my understand. thing. He yeah, said yeah. that, so that's the hot take. So I want to know what's the reasoning behind that. But like, what is he claiming? I need to know what he's, he's claiming. claiming that the Breakfast Club is over, and because that, Char that Charlemagne the God is over because of Monique. Because Monique so, came in there and respectfully got me to fuck up out of there. So the Breakfast Club is over. Yes, because an interview on the Breakfast Club became national news and a number one trending topic I, I, on YouTube. I don't understand Explain what Mal is talking about. Explain to me what makes something on. <laughs> yeah, the same, but what, by the way, what? the same things that we've been doing for the past eight years, like the Breakfast Club is always consistent <laughs> with interviews, but then every now and then we get one of those ones where somebody comes in there and yells and screams yeah. at Charlemagne or does whatever, and then it goes super viral. Do you know what you know? mal means in Spanish? Mile? Mal. Mal, what does it mean? Bad. Bad. And that's exactly what that take was. Your take lived up to your name, mal. Listen, Mal. Muy if, mal. Mal. If it's Muy not, mal, if mal. It's, if it's not your cup of tea anymore, I understand. Yeah. But we got to stop doing this thing in the culture where we just throw things out there with nothing behind them. If that's how you feel, fine. Yeah. But when you talk about things that can actually be proven, Breakfast Club, we're in 81 markets across the country, right? We're in 150 countries via the Armed Forces Network, right. okay? We were just on the cover of the Source magazine. Charlemagne the God is an individual we just launched a Noriega show on the run eating on Complex I'm executive producer of that you can check that out yeah. we got uh, you don't even need to qualify yourself I'm not going to qualify myself but I do want to say a couple things because I was going to talk about these yeah. things anyway the Hollywood Reporter thank you to them you know what I mean yeah, I'm, yeah. I was number nine yeah. uh, oh. in TV personalities on their social list last oh, week yeah, yeah. And uh, this week I'm number Hold this on. week I'm number seven, I go. believe. That's what's up. No, okay. it took me forever to put that together, man. Yeah, but I've never done this before. Okay, go ahead, make it rain. Make it rain. Make it rain. Oh, that's the money that Safari. I know, uh, I know. Safari came in the studio today and he debuted his new single. And I had a sneaky feeling that Safari was gonna get a hit single for the year was over. Yeah. I don't know if this record hundred is gonna be it. He sounds like Cardi. The guy that produced the record, produced Cardi, Bodak Yellow, did that record. Now, and I didn't, did anybody else say he sounded like Cardi too? Because the I, first I, I thing, said it had a Bodak Yellow feel, and then okay, somebody said... Okay, so you said, picked up on it as well. Yeah, but it's because the guy Swift, Salute to Swift, okay. Swift produced Bodak Yellow. Okay, so he has a sound. Yeah. Like, if you do a Pharrell song, that has a sound. Okay, yes, well, but, but finish, finish your thing Safari about, came in there and created yeah. a moment Man, today. It got me feeling bad about the, uh, the, the throwing the money. I was so <laughs> excited when I saw the money. I really <laughs> wanted to throw it. <laughs> All I'm saying is I just want to thank everybody who, who for the past seven to eight years has been 
been consistently tuning into the Breakfast Club, man. Like I, I think Maul said something like everybody tuned into the interview because it was Monique, my brother Maul. Malito, Mo Malito, Mo pobrecito. Mo Mo Monique did a million in a day. It's at two point six now. Two point seven. But Nipsey Hussle did like seven eight hundred thousand in a day. It's at like one point two. That was last week. We got M Migos so did two million this year. Money back, yo did over a million. Troy Ave did damn near a million. Chadwick Boseman did over a million. Like yo, salute to everybody who fucks with the Breakfast Club YouTube right. page. All I'm saying is you can't say certain things when it's analytics to prove well, otherwise. Some people my say things that they want to be true. That's a fact. And I think we have to be very careful that we don't believe things that we want to be true. And by the way, he may not feel the Breakfast Club no more, and that's cool. That's fine. You don't have to. But, but the reality but is millions that, of other people exactly. do. Exactly. Same thing with Amy Schumer. Same thing with Amy. <laughs> same thing with You said Amy Schumer wasn't funny about 14 times. Yeah, that guess what? All that got me was blocked on Twitter. He got her another $50 million. All right? <laughs> okay, so it don't matter. And I, I, I you just want to let all these black women know, I don't find these white bitches funny. By the way, Amy Schumer blocked me way before it was popular the not like white women. All right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Way before. You were ahead of the curve. I was ahead of the curve on not liking white women. Trend. Before the Tommy Lauren debacle with me and everything, I was on there trying to watch an Amy Schumer stand up and I was like, I don't get this Amy Schumer thing. Right. And she right. must have blocked me. You know? Yeah. And that's fine. But guess what? Just because I don't like Amy Schumer doesn't mean that right. millions of other people don't. I feel like this has been something that's that's come out on and again, I'm not an avid listener of the podcast, but every yeah. once in a while something will happen with you. And the first hot take is, yeah, Breakfast Club is done. On this podcast, this has happened several times. No, 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 I've, I've never heard it before. Yes, it, it has, it has been heard. It might not have been Maul, but it may, might have been Rory. And shout out to Rory. I, I like Rory. Um, he tweeted about your stand-up the other day, too. Somebody said that. He said, short stand-up is funny. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. He right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, right, bro. I'm, I'm one of the best. Listen, I can't man. deny it, bro. Hey, man. All and shouts out to uh, uh, what's it called? I'll talk about shows a little bit. Thank you so much, Tampa. Everybody who came out to the shows in Tampa. But I guess what I'm saying is I've heard this take before, and I think it's a common take, not just from these guys, but it's a common take when you're on top, right? Yes. When you're on top. What place can you go? For any, for, by the way, for anybody. For anybody for, for, in any yeah, field. Yeah, for anything. Yes. What place can you go? Down. My mom was three-time U.S. Ballroom Dance champion. Yeah. What do you think people said to her every single year You'll she was competing? You'll never be fourth. You never before. Yeah. Or the second year, it was, uh, I don't think it's going to be that again yeah. for Sandra Cameron. The third year, it's not going to be. We, uh, Jordan, I think it might be a wrap for Jordan. LeBron's starting to slow down. Yeah. Hey, Steph's ankle might not. Da, da, da. Yeah. So it is the ultimate compliment when you have people who want to be in competition with you saying that you're falling off. I love because it. Because they're only implying that you're on top. Nobody goes to the people who are in fourth place. Hey, Snapple's really falling off. What the fuck about Snapple? What's up with Coke? And then he said, let's revisit this in two months. Two months, Ma? That's all you give? Like, God damn. You can't give Stop it. Stop trying to be me. Everyday struggle tenure. Exactly. <laughs> Stop trying to be me and predict what's going to happen. That don't, that don't happen. Listen, my brother. That don't Listen, happen. I was involved in that prediction, too. Well, I'm I just, just saying, like to put that That in. don't happen in eight years. It takes two months for something. Come like, on. stop, I'm man. Come on, because man. you know what's going to happen in two months? There's going to be another hot interview. Hey, There's thank gonna God. There's going to be another sexy All thing. All I'm happen. saying is that, yo, you got to stay consistent. That's something that the Breakfast Club has done. Uh, when these moments mm. happen, when these moments happen, like the Moniques or the Birdmans or the Fred Rose or Beanie, yeah. I never try to make these things happen. They just happen. So, and they happen for me doing what I do best, which is always coming from an honest place. So I can't knock them all for feeling like that because he's right. coming from an honest place. Right. I respect your opinion, but you're absolutely positively wrong, and analytics will prove you wrong. Stop right, listening to these stupid motherfuckers on social media. This is all about numbers. Right in today's conversation, because I watched the Monique interview, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was really interesting. I, and, I, and I don't I listen it. to Breakfast Club or watch the interviews, really. You yeah. know, every once in a while, a big one will pop up. I don't watch anything. It's nothing against you, yeah. but I don't watch anything. But the interview was really interesting. I thought it was really balanced, and your, your, all your dynamics were really good. But, um, but one of the things that... And I almost don't know if I want to give away. I don't know if I want to tell people what goes in a sausage. Talk to me. Well, I think one of the things that, that you do well that people might not realize is in a heated interview, you allow the person to build all the buzz. As you should. Well, some people will go at it and they'll combat and they'll yeah, make yeah, yeah, a yeah. fight out of it. Yeah. But if you notice an interview, you're kind of just letting Monique talk. As you should. As you should because Monique being there is going to build the buzz. Yes. You can t say whatever you want. You have this platform five days a week. Yes. Let her get everything out of her system because eventually 
you're going to have to stand behind what you say. Absolutely. And it's, the more you say, yeah. the harder it is. See, the thing is, and I tell interviewers this all the time, and this, yeah. is, this is for any interview, whether right. it's heated or whether it's just a regular conversation. Yeah. It's not about you. It's about the person you're yeah, interview. interviewing. So even when they come in there and they want to make it about me and she keep asking me, why'd you give me donkey today? I told her over and over because I feel like you're weaponizing real issues right. like gender bias and racial bias and the plight that black women are going through in America and you're using it for personal gain. How I many? Other, that was great. How many other times do you want me to say it? That was great. <laughs> like, that was great. Like how many other times do you want me to say it? Yep. So, you know, once again, when we talk about analytics, right? This is the thing with the Monique situation. Yeah. Does racial bias exist? Absolutely. Does gender bias exist? Absolutely. Is the plight that the black woman is going through in America, are they undervalued, underappreciated? Absolutely. That has nothing to do with Monique's situation. And right. y'all can sit here and, 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 and bark at me until you're blue in the face right. and say it absolutely does, but it doesn't because it's about analytics. Should Monique have gotten more? What do you mean by analytics? Analytics. Netflix based their stand-up specials right. off what you're doing on the road. Right. You know, how how much are you selling out these 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 comedy shows and these tours? Yep. I'm sure Buzz has something to do with it, too. Like, you know, you can't ignore the fact that, you know, uh, uh, Amy Schumer had train wreck or whatever that did $145 million. Like, you can't ignore certain things like that to buzz around a person. Does this person have interest, right? Yeah, because, yeah. because when you look at somebody like Cat Williams, yep. who has been a bigger liability than Cat Williams? There, nobody. Nobody. Yeah. But guess what? Cat Williams. Zaza Pachulia. Pachulia. I don't even know who that is. He's Cat Williams. Cat NBA Cat. player falling on that other NBA players oh, are hurting Oh, him. Russell Westbrook? <laughs> he yeah. fell on Russell yeah, Westbrook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cat Williams still sells out theaters. He still around sells country, out yeah. arenas around the country. Through all of this, even when he wasn't showing up for shows or whatever, yeah. he still got his bag from Netflix. Oh, yeah. So, 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 did Monique deserve more than a half a million dollars? Absolutely. No, she didn't. Oh, well, listen, that, that's debatable, too. Well, uh, because a, a, a cost, a price, yeah. is based on the business standard, right? It's based yeah. on desire. A price isn't based on, like when you look at a piece of artwork, art is nothing. What we do is really nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Like if I buy the Mona Lisa, what do I do with it? I can't eat it. I can't make a house out of it. Yeah. It's only based on what other people think it's worth. The reason I think she can get more money is one reason, one reason okay. only. And you know this. That was the first offer. Ah, ah, you know ah, what I'm saying? Ah, 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 if a half ah. is the first offer, yes, 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 I yes. can get more. Okay, okay. And, and you brought that up. Here's my theory on it, and it might be a hot take, but I don't think she ever got a real offer. She did. She showed it. It was a contract. She put the contract up. She she, she did. And uh, my people at Netflix confirmed it. She did. She absolutely got a okay, real offer. Okay, well, something happened between the time when she... Because this is what was very suspicious to me. Yeah. She gets... And, and even when they were telling the story, it seemed really odd. Sydney, I think, was her Sydney, husband. Her husband. Yeah, 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 was on the phone. And he was like, I, they, I guess they got the offer or something like that. Then they went to go see her. Um, I, I need to know the timeline. I don't know if it was. Fr I don't know if they went to see her first, or got the well, offer. All I know, first. it I don't seemed know. like they had an offer. They went to go see her, and my people at Netflix said they did go see her. Yeah, and the club had like a hundred people. So she, they was like the standing ovation that they were talking about. Yeah, was like that was the waitresses. People. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were all standing. But, but, yeah. but okay, um, okay. So because just just going through the the, the thing. So they go see her. Maybe a hundred people. Um. They let's say they have an offer. They send it to her. They're on the phone. There's that phone call that gets you know somebody hangs up by accident. Yeah, was, or the I phone. don't know if it was miscommunication. They never call him back, right? Yeah. And then they never bother to reach back, and they're not answering Sydney's phone calls. That says to me that you're not interested in doing business with a client. Now, if there's anybody in this room that understands what it's like when someone doesn't want to do business with you yeah. about a comedy special, yeah. it's Andrew Schultz. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot about this. Yeah, you've been denied a lot. I've been denied. Netflix don't fuck with you either. Everybody. Yeah, 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 I, know, yeah, yeah. I know Robbie. Robbie, the person that they're talking yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. was the guy who brought me to the Montreal Comedy Festival Got you. early in my career. Got you. Do I know him personally? No, but this I, I know. I mean, we met. Yeah. Um... Point being, I don't think that there was a real desire there from the jump. And I think that's what we have to get at here, right? I just don't understand how they went the, from that yeah. to racial and gender bias. Well, like that's your next goal. Like you don't even like you, is, and, and by the way, they both yeah. said Monique said they counter offered, which she got so mad at me when I asked her the question because they didn't. But then she got so upset, and I was like, "But did y'all counter offer?" And she was like, "Yes, we did." And her husband was like, "No, we didn't." Why did they not? 
Because they said that Netflix didn't reply. I forgot. Exactly. I, they couldn't even get Netflix on the phone. But even still, you shouldn't jump on a... You sh- you're too old to make a video and immediately jump to race and gender bias. Well, think about because it. Because you didn't get a call back. Think about it, Charlotte. Or an and email another, back. Another thing to point out, which is very interesting, is that Monique also went the Andrew Schultz 441 route. What you she mean? released a special of her own on Amazon that people could buy and rent. She did? Yeah. <laughs> so what no that idea. says to me, what that says to me is that, and somebody sent me a clip of it, and she was like, we're doing it different. I think it's called doing it different or something like that. Okay. And what that says to me is that she'd been trying, and I think she alluded to this early in the interview, that she'd been trying to get a Netflix special or trying to get a special from all these companies and nobody would give her one. Well, this was after, yeah, because I asked her, I said, is there any other deals on the table? Has anybody Nothing. reached out to you? And she was like, we've been trying. Yes, but they're all, but no, she said yes, but they're all lower than the Netflix deal because of people like you. No, <laughs> no, she That's said there she was said. something like, we try every year, we try whatever like that, right? And, and No, you, she said Gary Owens tries every year. I know Gary Owens it. tried, but I had a note, but someone will listen to the to the podcast. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll point it out to yeah. us. But, but essentially... I think she's trying to get one, and everybody's saying no. I mean, that's why you put your your own out, right? Which, which is nothing wrong with that. That's what you should. That's, that's what I did. That's what everybody should be striving to do. At Absolutely, this point in the game. because if you truly believe you got the people, that's then they'll it. come support you. I mean, Louis C.K. had the people. That's it. They came and bought his shit for five dollars. That's it. Which really fucked every other comedian. Because we used to sell our DVDs or, or CDs after shows for yeah. 10 15 20 dollars, and Louis C.K., the biggest comic in the world at the time, sells his whole fucking shit for five, and now yeah. we look greedy, but whatever. Um, but that's the the plan. I gave my shit away. Yeah. But that is, and I'm giving away every every week. I think that's what we need to acknowledge here. The market has decided they're not interested in you. A couple things she brought up, which I thought were very unfair. She was like, I was in the cast of Black Christmas. Almost Christmas, man. Whatever. <laughs> It's because it's it's it got a bunch of black people in it. Don't mean it's black Christmas. Every it's time she said Christmas. almost Christmas, I was hearing black Christmas <laughs> the entire episode. Almost Christmas. So she was in the, the uh, episode of, of Hennessy Christmas. And <laughs> listen, and uh, and she goes, no, no. And uh, now I looked up the movie and it was amazing. It had made for 17 million and 45 million. It's, it's incredible. starring 15 people. But it's starring 15 people. Exactly. It's an ensemble cast. Even with the Queens of Comedy thing she said, that was an ensemble. It's an ensemble well, cast, like, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. you're not responsible for all of that. Like even Amy Schumer's movie The Tanked, right? That made 45 million and it was made for 43. Amy Schumer was 90% of the draw. Maybe yeah. Goldie Hawn was 10%. She's sharing the draw with 15 other people. That's a different draw that by, you have. By the way, Monique said in the interview when I told her that Amy Schumer did her Netflix deal before she did that movie. Oh, that, was great. With Goldie Hawn, that was great. And she was like, no, she didn't. You don't know what you're talking about. I talked to the president of Netflix. Salute to page six of the New York Post. Yeah, yeah. Because they did a whole article about the interview. And they was like, well, Charlamagne was actually right. Yeah. Amy did do the deal before... Amy did do her Netflix deal before that movie. You know how I know that information? Why? Because page six wrote about it. Two weeks ago, oh, okay. after after Monique did a rant on on online right. about that movie and how almost Christmas made more, she did that rant before. Right. Page Six did an article yeah. saying no, Amy actually did her Netflix deal before this movie. So that's yeah. how I got the information. Yeah. So listen, man, all I'm simply telling y'all is this: everybody has feelings. Everybody has opinions, but there's certain things that can be proven with facts. Yeah. So just because somebody is sitting there and telling you, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't have the need to sit there and prove them right when all you got to do is simply go do the research for your yeah. motherfucking self. It's I, right. once again, do not think Amy Schumer is funny, which is why she'll have me blocked on Twitter forever. Mm-hmm. But in 2016, she sold out 50 cities around the world. The motherfucking world. And she had an HBO special mm-hmm. that did high ratings before. So when it comes time for Netflix to do a motherfucking deal, she's got all of this different leverage. She's got these numbers that she showed out mm-hmm. these shows around the world. Yep. She's got a bidding war, because I'm sure HBO wanted her again. Yep. Not to mention other other outlets like Hulu, Amazon, whoever the fuck knows wanted her again. Bidding so she war. could create a goddamn bidding war. We keep talking about Dave Chappelle. Y'all got to stop saying things that y'all don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. Y'all said Dave Chappelle just came out of nowhere and got $20 million. No, Dave Chappelle did 50 1500 this is factual 
1,500 shows before his next Flix deal. From 2014, 2013, when he came back, he was selling out Radio City and selling out these arenas all over the world. 1,500 shows. Whether or not people was booing him or didn't like what he was doing, yep. they were still showing the fuck up. Yep. So when you got that on top of the fact that it's Dave Chappelle, yep. then you can talk. Yeah. Chris Rock, what did Chris Rock do before he did his Netflix Total Blackout deal? Tour. Went back out on the road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Selling out across America, selling out across the world. We talking analytics. It's a reason these motherfuckers are getting these big numbers. Now, yeah. Monique compared herself to those three. Yeah. We don't think she should have got that kind of money. But it's other people you could have compared yourself to. We want, what, what did Cat Williams get? What did no, you, you don't compare yourself even to Cat. Cat, Cat was one of the biggest acts in the world. I'm sorry. Like, I, you know, I just did a club recently, and the uh, the woman said that they struggled. I mean, she, she ended up selling out the club. Yeah, yeah. But they were struggling to sell tickets. And she also said that she there's two people that she would never work with again. She's not the owner of the club or anything like that. She's yeah. the one who works there. But she said there's two people she would never work with again. One is Pauly Shore and the other is Monique. You, you notice in the interview, though, I never like, I never bought her attitude in the question. Angela yeah, I know Angela Yee was doing it, but again, because that's all subjective. Right? Exactly. exactly. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's, an, talk, let's numbers. talk business. It's all analytics. About business. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Let's talk yeah. analytics. And also, you know, like, but, but I'm just saying, let's come. I want to compare it to other comedians. What did Ali Wong get for her Netflix special? What did uh? Yo, like, by the way, what did Russell Peters get? I mean, Russell should have got the bag. Because on the y'all, Forbes list, he's up there. That's it's what one I'm of saying. The most, but and, and he's global. What well, I think a better uh, example is what did Chingo Bling get do you know that rapper he's like a he's a latino rapper yeah he's out of texas he got a comedy special he got it netflix i haven't even watched it but i'm just single bling yes so he he started doing stand i swear to god son look it wow. up right now so he started doing stand-up right and i think he did like a comedy special slash it's like a comedy special slash um like sketches and that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff yeah. like that and i think he started doing now this guy's barely been doing comedy at all but what does he have Big viral following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? What does he have? He has Latin community. What does Netflix not have? They probably don't have a big Latin special. They probably haven't done with George Lopez or doesn't want to do it. They're like, we need somebody to represent this kind of young, hip Latino community. Okay, here's a guy that we Chingo can Blink do. Chingo Blink cannot be young. Chingo Blink got to be in his 40s. He got good. I've been hearing about Chingo Blink my whole goddamn life. Well, he's looking good for me. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is, like, uh, what, what is his name? Um, uh, Rob Gronkowski has a, a comedy special he's hosting. For uh, Showtime. The football player? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is actually a brilliant idea. Okay. But uh, what they should do is, because nobody cares about stand-ups that aren't big, right? Yeah. Like, the average person doesn't care, you know? So what you do is take somebody who has a big name, who's a big character, just get him to host the special, and then you put no-name comics with it. So they trying to do with Rob what they did with Shaq, like the Shaq All-Star exactly. comedy special? Exactly. Okay. But Shaq wouldn't get up there and actually do it. Rob is up there doing jokes about going to Tom Brady's house and never being invited. See, we don't want to see that. Now, we no, do. Rob. You no. know you're going to look up that clip. No, I'm not. You're going to see it for the car accident. I'm going to be crash. honest with you. There's nothing appealing. There's nothing sounds appealing about Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> now, right. mind you, one of my favorite things in the world is watching comedians bomb. Yeah. I like that more than a comedian making me laugh. Yeah, of course. Like, if you see me at a comedy show and I'm laughing... It's because he's bomb. It's probably because you bomb. <laughs> <laughs> right? I guess, but I guess the point is that the, 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 uh, you know, the market will set the price. You know, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. interest in Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. There's just not interest in Monique. I By mean, the way, the Daily, you're right. And the Daily Mail did a whole article talking about that. Yeah. The Daily Mail talks about how... I think she owes a half a million dollars in taxes. They talk about this stage play that she's doing now, which is based off the movie Barbershop and how they had how they had to cancel a bunch of dates moving forward because of low ticket sales. So all I'm saying is, man, for all you people that are on social media yeah. acting like y'all support her so much, go buy, you know, a, a ticket to her show. Go bless you. Go on Netflix and watch, you know, her comedy special that's been on Netflix for a while that is one of the lowest viewed comedy specials on there. That these are all facts that Netflix that you can look up. Yeah. Like, go support her. Like, like support her the way Amy Schumer's people support her. Stop talking about how Amy's unfunny and Monique is funny. If Monique is Just so support. funny, support her. Why her show at the Apollo in May hasn't sold out yet? Why is it on Groupon? Like, we got to stop talking so much and actually support people, you know? And, and once again, God bless Monique. I wish Monique the best. But what we're talking about right now is simple analytics and i just think that it's very dangerous when we live in a society where people are weaponizing real issues yes, yes. for personal gain you yes. know what i mean not only just weaponizing real issues weaponizing herself like at yeah. the end of the interview when she said that i am the slave that would have took my my wife to master to get fucked and i don't value black women and i don't appreciate black women like monique come on man you just told a story with 10 15 years ago was it that long not about 12 years ago 
that you saw me on the elevator yeah. and held the elevator for you and you gave my re- yeah. your, your regards to my mom and yeah. grandma but now all of a sudden I don't yeah. like black women because I don't respect you yeah. but people play that card a lot so I can't just blame it on her Martin no, Shkreli did the same thing Martin Shkreli called me racist because right. I would give him donkey of the day and go at him. I'm not racist just because I disagree with you and think you full of shit. Right. Right. Racist because you hate white people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All white people. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just like, whatever. I wish you the best. But, but one thing that we have to stop doing is we, stop, have to, we have to stop going off what we feel and what, what our opinion is yeah. and trying to paint this shit as fact. Right, be objective about it. And, and, I think, and, and that's why yeah. Maul was actually agreeing with a lot of the things that Monique was saying, but Ma, that's because you're the type of person that clearly goes off feelings right, <laughs> and right, opinions right. instead of the facts of the matter. Be objective, right. man. Malito, malito, malito. Like, that's why yeah, I like, yeah. listen well, to we Joe and Rory. Numbers be, be objective. We're just talking about numbers. There's right. no way for Monique to justify getting the kind of payday that Amy Schumer well, got, and, Chris Rock, or Dave Chappelle. And that's why people make that the arguments that she was making yes. is because people like Maul and a lot of other people fall for them so easily. There's right? no it's facts a, to It's it. an easy trap. But yeah. if I call you, hey, you disagree with me? You kind of sounding like a coon. Yeah, yeah. Are you yeah, disagree? Yeah. Yeah. Cuz only coons disagree yeah. with me. Yeah. Hmm, you kind of sound like a racist if you disagree with me. Yeah. Every time I asked her, when's the last time you filled out filled up an arena? Nothing. You don't value black women. Exactly. <laughs> like but, what? But she's, like, she's she's quite brilliant with it. She's like oh, a fucking amazing. ninja. She's a ninja with her ability to use woman struggle and black struggle anytime she's in a corner. We live in a society now, where and people, it works, bro. It works because anybody works. because like you said, black women, black people, they've all been through racism and this type of oppression. So when they see somebody else say it happened to them, the natural reaction is. Well, if it's happened to me, it must have happened to her that she must be telling the truth. Any marginalized, oppressed community, you can use certain trigger words that make our people feel like they have an emotional, cultural obligation right. to stand with you and defend they you. They hold your character hostage. You. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah, it, I mean, it's what they did with me. Remember when I had have an opinion that was a little bit different on politics or something like that, immediately, like, you sounded kind of all right. You sounded kind of whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, no, we just disagree on the Sounding like, what but, are you... Uh, but everybody does it. Even conserv- conservatives do it when all, they say liberal snowflakes. You sounded like a pussy. Yeah, you, you sounded sound like a liberal soft. snowflake. Yeah, like, exactly. Like yep. everybody, just because you Absolutely. disagree with a person doesn't mean anything. Hold your character like, hostage. That, that's it. Yep. Like, why can't we just have the conversation... And agree because to disagree. That only happens when they don't have an argument. That's a fact, right? When you have an argument, when you could debate, you can back it up with facts. You back it up with your facts. Or when you have nothing, or something that can be proven. Exactly. When yeah. you have nothing, it goes. I think you're sounding like a racist. Word of bone. I think you don't like black women. That's it, right? So you play off of that. Yeah, you play off that thing. And there was one more thing I wanted to say about Monique um, with the or or just this situation. Oh fuck! It'll come it? back to you. We got to right, go, 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 go. But no, I'm just saying that, that was that was my biggest thing. Um, and I, I guess I want to clear up some things too, man. I guess uh, you know, it was another rumor. And this, this, oh man, this is what bugs me out so much about social media and the internet. Now. Yeah, motherfuckers will speak on things that they have no clue about. Like with, what like, happened? With the ultimate conviction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they be dead. Like all yesterday or maybe two days ago, everybody was mm. was tweeting me saying, Tiffany Haddish only got $800,000 for her Netflix special. It was, it was one tweet that's going around is Wanda Sykes got two fifty. Monique got five hundred. Tiffany Haddish got eight hundred thousand. Cause I guess Tiffany got fed up with people tweeting her saying, you know, Monique, if, if you get your multi million dollar deal, it's cause of Monique and Monique fighting for the cause or whatever, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. Tiffany oh. was like, uh, I already did my deal with Netflix. Okay, didn't she do HBO? No, she did a she did a production deal with HBO. Ah, uh, okay. So for her, she ready production company. So she did a production deal with HBO. But as far as like, you know, I, I guess her special or whatever that she got coming, right. she did a deal with Netflix. She was like, I didn't get legend money, but I got enough money to feed my family for the moment, whatever, right. whatever. So then when she put that out there, for whatever reason, it was this oh, Tiffany Haddish got eight hundred thousand dollars for her special. So he was like, see how black women get lowballed, blah blah blah, this and that. Tiffany got eight hundred thousand dollars for 10 episodes of a cartoon that she's doing the voiceover for. Whatever that cartoon is where she's playing the bird or whatever, okay. she got $800,000. That's right. $80,000 per episode. And she's going to tease the executive producer of that show, so that's going to be a whole nother check. Yeah, you got 10% of the uh, the budget. So once again, yeah. you motherfuckers that are talking don't know what yeah. the fuck y'all are talking about. And just to put you in perspective, $80,000 an episode is massive. You want to know how I know? How much? 
Well, I can't speak on that. Yet, but I will, I will say this. Yeah, 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 okay? Yeah. I've done voiceovers for cartoons. Ain't got no eighty thousand. They ain't not even close. <laughs> yeah. No, by the way, hold on. I got one coming out. I yeah. can't talk about it. Oh, when it when but just remember when it does finally yeah. come out, I'm gonna revisit this conversation and let y'all know. Cause I'm gonna keep on with y'all. I ain't you nowhere near eight hundred thousand dollars. Let me put let okay? me put you in perspective. I I tell you what, matter of fact, I'll tell you what I got now so right, when go, you hear go, it. Go, 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 go. Scale, nigga. All right. <laughs> all right. Okay. And this is after negotiations. <laughs> this is after lawyers yeah. and all of that shit. Yeah. You know why? Because that ain't my lane yet. And I gotta prove myself. And then when you prove yourself, you'll Boom. be able to get guess Boom. what guess what you can get a lot of money in? Radio. Oh, absolutely. And what scale you're talking about is SAG after scale, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever they have to, the lowest they have to pay. Absolutely. So, and just to put it in perspective, uh, one pilot season, I went out there and I got a, uh, I got, uh, what's it called? Um, I forget the exact name, but uh, I, it was between me and somebody else for a sitcom. Yeah. It was called Dr. Ken on ABC. Yeah. I think Ken Jeong is in it. You guys have uh, probably seen it. Maybe it's still on the air. And I was going to be a regular character in that sitcom. And you sign a deal for seven years. When you do that. Shit. Right? And this will go into the Monique thing. It's a seven-year deal where they have the first option on you for anything. So meaning if you want to do a movie, another TV show, anything, you have to get permission from ABC to go do it. Mm -hmm. That was for $35,000 an episode. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but it's not $80,000 an episode. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, So this is, now we're at different places in our life, but that's for TV, network, TV. ABC, primetime TV, 35, 35 Tiffany, Tiffany's red hot right now. She's doing double, which and, is phenomenal. And, and by to the way, a pigeon. Whatever, whatever she got for her stand-up deal, yeah. she knows she's not supposed to get as much as Amy or Chris she's or not Dave. Yet. Not she yet. Might be. Yeah. Not yet. You give you give Tiff one year when mm. she gets the time yeah. that she can really go on the road yeah. and sell out these arenas, which I'm sure she will. Yeah. Easy, easy money. Oh, that's absolutely easy, true. easy, and I want, I want, easy money. I want to dispel one myth about uh, something that uh, Monique was saying. She was saying that, uh, and Sydney was saying she got a two-year deal and she couldn't do any other stand-up for two years. She was like, the deal said we couldn't do any other stand-up for two years. Remember, no, she said, yeah, that? but you can't do that material. I think it's not the stand-up. It's not that. It's she can't do. She can't be paid to do a TV appearance or or on another network for two years. So what they're doing is protecting their investment. Right. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So gotcha, they gotcha. want a two-year hold. So let's say your let's say your special does really well. Yeah. Hey, let's bring you back and do another special. Yeah. So it's exclusivity. It's Thank exclusivity. You. Of course you would want that. Of if course you would want that. Why would Netflix blow you up with a special and then let HBO just come in and hop on? Absolutely. Just like me when I signed that seven-year deal, their idea was, yo, we want to lock this character into a nice, comfortable rate for the next seven years. Yeah. This is why all these guys on like Big Bang Theory end up making million dollars an episode after that initial contract runs yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying there's a lot of shit that was being thrown out here there was and people eat it up because they just don't know no better look once again racial bias exists gender bias exists the, mm -hmm. the black woman being Ooh, undervalued and underappreciated that is it. real that's all facts but, but guess, this has nothing to do with that you know what this is this is that chick that uh cried about aziz listen and man, i'll tell you why this is no, because when uh, you, you come out crying when that chick came out crying about what aziz did right it turned down the volume on women's voices. That's, that's, that's my problem with it. So right here, when she weaponizes the black struggle and weaponizes women's struggle. You dilute the real issue. You dilute the real issue. You turn down the volume yes. of black women out there who are actually going through yes. this. And turn down the volume on black people going up. Because yes. then they start going, when you see a black guy didn't get a role, and they go, hey, dude, I swear that this director was being racist. We go, ah, you just pulling a Monique. Every time a black person doesn't get anything, yes. I guess it's because of racism. You're dismissing you, every, and that's the other problem. I don't dismiss every other factor that could possibly Cause, that could have possibly caused you to not get paid the way you want to get paid. Right. I'm not bringing the attitude and all of that shit in there, but to me it's about an analytics and attitude. It's just attitude. numbers, dog. That's it. That's it. At the end of the day, it's really all about numbers. And like, yo, man, I love all of these black women comedians that she named. Some more, Adele, all of these different people. But I haven't seen a black female comedian yet be on the level of a Chris Rock, a Dave Chappelle, even a Cat Williams. Not yet. You know what I'm saying? And maybe that's our fault. Maybe we haven't supported our women the way that we should have in comedy all have these Have you seen years. an Asian one do it? Have you seen a Native American one do it? Yeah. Who? Russell Peters. Ain't no, that's he? Indian. <laughs> <What is it>? <laughs> <laughs> I just know he's something. That's the other Indian. <laughs> he's, he's something else. Yo, but, I mean, Ali Wong, what is she? Russell Peters is a perfect example. Russell Peters was the biggest comic in the world. Still is. Or, or it might be the biggest comic in the world. Maybe biggest torn. 
biggest touring gotta be because yo. he does India does all these other yes, places internationally exactly but but he can't get a TV show in America and why is that because the numbers here don't match up I want to know how much Russell Peters got now that I think about it for his, uh, his detective show? special Netflix had to pay him a grip yo well I know that well yeah because I'm about to send an email and find yo, out find I need out. to know because Netflix India Netflix India bought that shit basically I thought it was. I saw the trailer. No, it's here as well. But okay. like, you produce content for all the things. But his thing is gonna pop huge in India, and then you got a billion people that could, or two billion people that could potentially have Netflix. I mean, a lot of them too poor to even have electricity. But the ones with electricity probably got Netflix. The moral of the story is it's just money, dog. It's just the moral of the story is this. Oh, real quick. Okay. Before we close up, so the Netflix. The reason it's genius is because they are hyper nerds when it comes to analytics. Yes. Right. So the reason they decide to do the Kevin Spacey show that was written by who wrote that House of Cards, Chris? Uh, I forget the guy's name. Uh, or directed it. It was a big uh, time director. Forget his exact name. And anyway, not Aaron Sorkin. No, it's another guy. Hugh Williams is the main guy. Who wrote it? No, but there was who's the original writer? I know who you're talking about. Anyway, the reason they decided to do it with Kevin Spacey and this other guy is because they did analytics on Kevin Spacey movies that were on Netflix. And they saw people love Kevin Spacey on yeah. our show. Our fans love love uh, uh, Kevin Spacey. And then they looked at David Fincher movies and TV shows, and they're like, yo, people love David Fincher. And you know what we should do? We should take these two things that people love that are proven by our analytics and mash them together. You know who else got the bag? Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler got a five-movie deal yeah. from Netflix. Why? Because Billy Madison and fucking whatever those other movies that he do, uh, Lil Nicky, all the all these Adam Sandler. Was, Shonda Rhimes got a bag. Shonda Rhimes got over $100 million. You know million. why Shonda got over $100 million? Shonda left ABC to go to Netflix. Guess, Netflix. guess what kills on Netflix, probably? Grey's Anatomy. Listen, all these other fucking shows. Even if it didn't. Even if it didn't, they like, yo, Shonda Rhimes, her numbers at ABC. That's true. Proved that she brings in ratings. She would have, a, she would definitely have leverage because of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. But imagine the leverage you have when you know for a fact that the people love your food. Imagine the leverage you have when you got a bidding war. Imagine of the leverage course. you have when you are at ABC and you got three shows that are proven. Right. ABC wants to keep you. Other right. networks are probably trying to get you. Netflix like, yo, break the fucking Brinks trust oh, up and let's get Shonda Rhimes in here. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is the audience itself is already proven, mm -hmm. right? If I if we bring a random person to the Breakfast Club that nobody's heard of, you don't know if your audience is going to like them or not. No. But, but yeah, you're right. But you do, you're taking a chance. But we're taking a chance off off us. Off of you. Knowing that, we you know what, we the Breakfast Club, people fuck with us a lot. Mm -hmm. If we present it to them and they enjoy, they'll at least give it a chance. They're going to give it a chance because they believe in you And once guys. you give it a chance, you share it. Like, yo, y'all, I see it all the time going on YouTube. Yo, this interview was way doper than I thought. Like, yo, y'all should check bang. this shit out. Yeah. But what if you bring someone that they fucking love? Even bigger. Exactly, because they already yeah. fucking know. They already mess with them. They already love it. And that's what happens with a lot of these people. The, the shit is proven. Like you said, her Netflix special was the lowest rated or something like that. I don't know what, what exactly you said. but I don't know if it was the lowest rated on there, but it's one of the lowest rated. One is the lowest rated yeah, on there, right? Now, meaning I'm t I'm imagining that's in terms of how many people have watched it. By the, yeah. And, I've, and my people at Netflix said that. So... The fact that they even made her the offer, which I don't think was a, a real offer. I think they were like nah, dabbling. It was, real offer. Nah, it was there. It was there. Well, then why never answer? Something happened that they're not that they're omitting in their story that makes Netflix stop answering. Because you don't hand someone a contract and then they're willing to sign it and then you don't answer the, the phone anymore. It was Is, some, am I right or wrong? It was about some that? clear miscommunication. And I mean, you know, before they before the video came out, she got ghosted, bro. My, my people at Netflix definitely told me that they. Uh, they, they told Netflix, like, they were going to start this kind of campaign if they didn't get what they wanted. But that's that's neither here nor there. Like, all of that stuff is just behind-the-scenes speculation that people don't know about. The moral of the story is Monique and Ma don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Right? That, that <laughs> but is. if you feel them, cool. That's cool, too. But certain things can be proven with analytics, bottom line, point blank, period. One last thing I want to touch on. It's not thought, cool if you feel them because you're not being an objective person. But some, everybody not objectivity a, is very important. We need Everybody to get, not going to have it. Shows. I know everybody's not going to have it, but, but I would be disrespecting you if I didn't hold you to the same standard that I hold everybody else. If I treat you like a child, yeah. that's me treating you different. I got to treat you like an adult. And adults understand numbers. When the IRS comes and asks for Maul's taxes, Woo! he ain't going to be like, yo, I had a hot year. You can't say this was the Joe Budden yeah, podcast yeah, exactly. and you wasn't getting paid. <laughs> exactly. They don't want I, don't, that. I doubt you are because you don't have no ads on the show, but. Right, you know, whatever. Come to we, the loudspeaker. We yeah, fix yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs>
after we help ourselves yeah. out. Chris. Chris. But I want to say one more thing about this, and we can end it. I mean, we don't got to end it, but um, Monique, when I asked her, I said, why don't you go out there on the road and do it yourself? And she said, because she's not giving the opportunity, which once again sounds like, I'm a black woman. People aren't giving a black woman who has been labeled as disgruntled and having a bad attitude a yeah, chance, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a very prominent comedian hit me up and he said, first and foremost, when you're a hot comedian, you don't work for promoters. Promoters work for you. So Chris Trock told you. I tell that. them <laughs> when I want to go on the road. This is the most Chris. It, it had I, to be Chris. I, I tell them this guy when Chris. I want to go on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know? Great. Yeah. When it comes to arenas and things like the garden. Yeah. There's no option to do that. You get to do those things yeah. based off what you have already done on that motherfucking road. Right. Dave Chappelle don't like doing big arenas. Right. Which is Dave why Chappelle he does chooses dates to do multiple dates at events. places like yeah. Radio City Music Hall because yeah. he don't like to do arenas. Dave has that option because yep. Dave is proven. Right. Amy Schumer likes to do the garden. So Amy Schumer can say, hey, I want to do the garden today and the promoters will set it up. They have that option based on their level of hotness. That's true, yeah. Based on the fact that they are proven with ticket sales already. Yep. So when Monique says that promoters won't allow her to do that, you're basically just saying you don't have the option because you're not the draw that we know you aren't. All yeah, right. We, we know you're not that draw, and that's not a diss. When I I don't like to just talk about problems. Let's talk about solutions. Everybody needs to go out there and start start supporting Monique. All of this shit y'all doing on social media where y'all If you like her, her comedy. If you like her comedy. But, yeah. but no, even if you don't, fuck that. If you on social media and you talking all this shit, oh, oh, coming to the defense oh, of Monique, back it up. show up to her motherfucking show. Yeah, yeah. Chance the rapper, cancel your Netflix account. Because you oh, it's chance, chance that he's staying on Monique. So cancel your Netflix account yeah, yeah, yeah. and start supporting Monique yeah. on on the way she needs to be Absolutely, supported. Yeah. Show up to her comedy shows. You hey, listen, you don't have to stand for Monique because there are plenty of seats at her shows that you can sit in. Hey, okay, but that's all. Listen, all I'm simply saying is all that's all I'm simply saying. Like you don't show support the way that she really needs to be supported. Because yep. based off what I'm seeing on social media, there's no reason that her her show should be being canceled. The play that she's in. The barbershop play or whatever. Right. Which, by the way, bruh. What is it? You you, it? I'm just saying, like, that's a different, like, come on, man. If you, have, you, you shouldn't be doing that, Monique. Yeah. An Oscar-winning actress should not be doing the barbershop play, but clearly she needs the bread because we just saw her hit, get hit with a tax lien. She owes over half a million dollars in taxes. So, you know, all I'm saying is when she's at, is out there. almost all that out, bro. You could have knocked all that out. When, when, when you're out there doing this type of shit, yeah. yo, people, go support her. Because yeah. she wouldn't be in this situation if she actually had the support. Right. Because if she had the support, then she'd have the analytics to back it up. Right. No, so, that's true. So go support her. That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And once again, Monique and Mal don't, give a, don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> but if you feel them, salute to you. Okay? Yeah. Now, all we care about are numbers over here. All we care we about became, is We became uh, experts today. We became, we're not yeah, idiots we experts, today. It's just common sense. I mean, as a matter of fact, it's not even common sense. <laughs> we nerds These out are, here. We want to see the Everything we're talking about can be backed up. <laughs> Facts. Not, yeah. not uh, you don't value black women. <laughs> all right? You hate black women. Okay? That, that, that's not... But you got to prove... Not, you gotta pr how do you prove that, dude? I always talk about this with you, but the stress being black that you could lose your blackness at oh, it's a, any point in uh, time. Listen, the blackness is challenged every day, but guess what? I truly, honestly, don't give a fuck anymore. Good. I got. I, I really, honestly, don't give a fuck because at the end of the day, I know the truth about myself. And like I, I talk about this, it's funny. Uh, I, I do talk about this in my my new book. My, my second book because hey. um, you know I'm in New York hey. Times best because the first author. one sold so you got an opportunty yeah and the, paper, another, the okay. paperbacks coming out April 24th but I got oh a, and they made a paperback because the the hardcover, hardcover probably so well. sold, yeah. sold so many and Absolutely. that's how paperback oh yeah. okay and I'm very happy about the paperback before you the got prisons. the paperback did you say why don't I have a paperback because I'm a black male and black male are underprivileged or did you like or I, they just offered it to you because did, you sold no, it no they actually told me I did say why don't I have a paperback yet and it was like because the hardcover is doing great oh let's make some more money yeah <laughs> let's wait so it's been a full year since the hardcover's been out, right. and April 24th, the paperback will come out. Right. But I do talk about it in my upcoming book about how, you know, on social media, we see all of these different things about ourselves. Right. Right? You have to be secure in the fact that you know the truth. Mm. We put too much stock in what these motherfuckers think. Yeah, yeah. Like, why do you good. care about what somebody else believes about you if you know yeah. that it's a lie? 
Yeah. Like you shouldn't have to prove it. Like like you knowing should be enough. You don't have to prove it to the world. Because guess what? Motherfuckers that really don't like you will always be hell bent on misunderstanding you. They don't want to like you. That's so that's why whenever somebody doesn't like you, they'll ride with anything that's it against, goes you. against you. It yes, don't even yes, gotta make yes, sense. Yes, 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 they yes. just see everybody not fucking with this thing at the moment, so they ride with whatever the that way. Enemy is. of the enemy is your friend. Absolutely. You, you might not even like Monique, but the second she went at Charlemagne, Ooh. all of a sudden it's oh that's my buddy. Ooh. Oh, oh Monique's the legend. She the Funniest Ooh. ever. When was the last time you watched Monique Mall? Never. Oh, you, you bought tickets to Apollo Mall? Never. I want to see the receipts. And that's what I mean. Like, if you really love somebody, support them. Go my people, out there. My people, thank God they support me, and I appreciate the support. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. guess what? I'm not going to always get it right all the time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm going to be wrong, and when I'm wrong, I'm going to own up to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when I'm yeah. right, I'm going to be comfortable knowing I'm right. And I don't care if you think I'm right or not. Because guess what? One thing I've learned about social media that is the minority who is very, very, very loud. Yeah, you're okay? talking about Latinos. Shut up. <laughs> when I'm out and about, when I'm out and about, it's a whole different conversation going on. Right, it's love. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, people yeah. know what it is. Like, yo, yeah. bro, I really like the way you handled that Monique situation, okay? And it don't, even matter, it don't even matter who said it or why they said it. I just know that. It's the rule of 10 at all times. Three people are going to like it. Three people are not going to like it. Four people are going to be on the fence about it. And that's just the way that it goes. And that's yep. the way I move. But I just want everybody out there from now on, whenever you see something on social media about yourself, just be comfortable knowing that you know the truth. Stop trying to prove shit to these motherfuckers because they don't matter. Mm. At the end of the motherfucking and day. And stop caring once the next thing happens. They, they, listen, soon as... Safari dick pics. By the way, <laughs> Safari dick pics came out... Dick. Who's got his dick? Does anybody I, have I'm not. I'm not looking at it. I want to look. I know, I know. I haven't I'm seen it, Paige. Let me I'm see it. Yo, you know what I realize? White people. I only look at little dicks. I'm gonna tell you why. I don't need. <laughs> I don't need. I'm gonna tell you why I only look at little dicks. I only look at little dicks for my self esteem. All right. There's no need for. If I see the reaction to Safari's dick, <laughs> where's Killmonger's dick coming listen, out? Listen, dick talk. <laughs> dick segment. Listen, whenever I see, when I saw the reaction to Safari's dick, I'm like, there's no. Need. I'm not. I'm not looking at this. Okay. For I, I want to see it, Paige. We passed around a certain person's dick. In the group chat. Bro. <laughs> bro. We can't say who it is. Bro, this but it was is a, a rumor. sad dick, bro. <laughs> I didn't even give him a dick talk, son. It didn't even warrant a dick talk, bro. But this was sad. It was sad. Man. It was sad. But the fact that this guy's like I thought six, he was six, holding a little piece of his nutsack. But the fact he's like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, no, he's in, not. How tall is he? <laughs> he's like 6'1". Six, six, no way. I'm taller. Wait a minute, who? Safari or the one we talking about? The one we talking about. Now he's like 6'1". I'm a little tall. All right, well, whatever. Maybe 6'2". Yeah. Well, the fact but he's built thick. There you go. And his penis there you go. ain't. He had the kind of dick that made me feel good about myself. <laughs> and I have a very average size dick. All right? <laughs> Let me see What'd you it. say? Hold on, Paige. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Get on that mic, Paige. What'd you say? Why you can't find Safari dick? Why? I can't find it because hashtag Safari on The Breakfast Club is trending. Oh, so so much shit about The Breakfast Club. Oh. Interview. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. I'm oh. just... Oh, I don't know. Oh, you right. Just you saying. Right. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. y'all for that, by the way. Respect. All I ever want to do is be consistent in anything that I do. Mm. That's all. Like I, and, mm. and, 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 and I told y'all a long time ago, Jay-Z said, you know, you're never going to be that 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 white hot thing. You only you only that like once, mm -hmm. but other than that, you just want to be consistent. You yep. want to play forever. Yep. You know, and I'm not. By the way, I'm not trying to do the Breakfast Club forever. By the way, mm -hmm. I have a very, I have an exit plan in my mind. Right. Trust me on yeah. this when and I say that. And it's not after the Monique interview. It's definitely not after the Monique interview. But I have an exit plan in my mind for when I want to bow out gracefully. Yeah. You know, from from the Breakfast Club. Um, Would so, you like to tell us what but, that but, is? But in not? the meantime, it's just all about being consistent, and that's what it's always been about. Wow, you you you're really analyzing Safari's dick right now, dude. This guy shaves bare. What do you mean? Like he has no pubic hair. All right, here comes some hate. This is because he's trying to say that he shaves the pubic hair to make his dick look bigger. <laughs> Yo, All right, I didn't think about that, but that is interesting. We got the feds. Feds just pulled up. Gave, gave Chris a notice. Feds. What does he have a big dick? Um, the video is like swinging, but I can't find the video. Oh, it's a swinging dick. Oh, he's slapping it back and forth. He's doing a little man. bachata. Safari pulled off one of the greatest uh, PR stunts. I mean, he that I've might seen. wax. Yo, dude, look Safari at it. Safari created one of the greatest. The PR head stunts is all pink. I've seen in a minute. Let me tell you something. Body's all dark. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Safari yeah. needs to be applauded. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you the reason yeah. he's applauded. I've never seen nudes work for a guy. 
Never. Ooh. Never. You tell me a time. Tell me a time when you've ever seen nudes work for a guy. Did Did they, Big but Sean? Big Sean never claimed him. Big, Big Sean never said, this is me. Did he have a good meat? Yes. I don't know if it worked for Big Sean. Because right. Big Sean can actually rap. He don't need it. Talk about, talk about. It always works for everybody but women. No, let me tell you something. Big Sean can actually rap. Okay. And they say he got a big dick. But when he puts out music, people kill him about his lyrics. Safari so can't really rap. Right. But got a big dick. And people are like, yo, that new Safari sound all right. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? I see, I saw girls on social media saying, shit, Safari can say whatever he want with that meat. Like, so I think it worked for Safari. <laughs> yo, girls, you're mad shallow, man. I'm sorry. We got to stop acting like men are the only ones that objectify the opposite sex. M the women are shallow when it comes to big dicks. They're shallow with dicks and, si and height. Because girls will always be like, oh, men objectify so much. And let a girl try to date a dude way shorter than her. Get I the fuck out of here. I think women are more shallow with just big dicks. And I'm going to tell you why. You okay, go. Page? Where you All going? Right. I have to go to work. Can I take your All girlfriend? All that talk of big dick got her horny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To work, <laughs> huh? You going to work on that football player friend of yours. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I, I think women are shallow when it comes to big dicks. And the yeah. reason I say that is because even if a guy looks good, yeah. if they got a little dick. Oh, forget it. Oh, oh it's over. But I don't blame that. Because yeah. you got something that needs to be filled. Yeah, and if yeah, it don't yeah. fill it, then can't, you're not gonna be happy. Can't fill it with a pretty face, baby. You can't. There's only many. There's yeah. only but so much I can sit Listen, on. Listen, my, my nose is only so big. Okay, <laughs> I can't. I, I can't be putting my whole goddamn nose hey, in there. Man. Hey man, they suffocate. Hey man, but listen, salute to Safari. That was a well played move, and I know it was so well played because he came on the Breakfast Club to debut this song. Now, mind you, a month ago, mm -hmm. I said I got a feeling Safari is gonna get a hit single this year. The only reason I feel like that is because Safari has a likability. People like There's Safari. a humility to him. That's, they like him. Yeah. And sometimes that's all it takes nowadays. People just need to like you. Of and he's very self-deprecating. You don't take himself too serious. He can joke on himself, whatever. So I'm and like, he lets Yo. people joke on him. Yeah, it's funny. Boom. That yeah. whole hairline thing, I saw a clip on that on Twitter, it. and I thought he handled it really well. He that's was kind of laughing about it. Yeah. And, and and it's not that, when I say hit song, I don't mean that he'll probably have a number one single. He'll yeah. just have a record that's that's popping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It'll chart on Billboard, whatever, whatever. And he milked his appearance on Breakfast. I just want to say, oh. like, he... he he did that right. He, he made, made the most of it. He made the most of it. He had props. He had, he had a stripper. He had a girl with him. Yeah. And yeah. he had punchlines for his dick. Wait, he was like, yo, this single that I'm about to put out is huge. You know, I worked <laughs> I worked long and hard on it. I'm like, you think I don't know what the fuck you doing, Safari? <laughs> he even went so far as to say, I go, I go, yo, man, I did say that a, that a month ago you was going to have a hit single this year. He goes, yo, Charlamagne has a powerful mouth. Like, he was just saying little gay in the window. I'm telling you, this song is going to increase my neck girth I mean my net worth <laughs> it worth more he yo. was just saying little things like yo I, I rose to the occasion <laughs> yo, you know what I'm saying he, yo he did what Neuro he was supposed to do neurolinguistic programming he, hey are you mad can you be mad at him no let him win if it works it works that's it let the market decide that's I'm, it. I'm a capitalist fuck it that's it that's it same way I feel like Maul baited me into talking about the Joe Budden podcast well done but I have talked about it on this podcast before I, I think, think you he wants always... I think he wants me to talk about it on the breakfast club but I'm not gonna do that ah you know but what I I'm feel saying? like you've always been complimentary of See, their podcast I love the Joe Budden podcast and I listen every week you if I if I may be if I'm correct you said Maul was the perfect addition. Yeah. I think you specifically but I don't complimented. Care about that, I don't care about that. Just no, I, no. Yeah, yeah. But because just because your objective, you're like, no, you did this thing that was that was yeah. good. You added this piece to the podcast He's, that wasn't yes. there before. But but keep in mind, it is the Joe Button podcast. Let's be clear on that. Yeah, once Maul got popping, Joe's like, let me rename this. <laughs> <laughs> what did Charlamagne say about the, the but not, podcast? But, but not salute to the Joe Button podcast. Salute to Mal. Salute to Rory. Salute to all the dope content yes. that's out there right now. Nori Absolutely. with Drink Champs, Jesus and Merrill, Kiff Fury and the Reed. Uh, those are four podcasts I listen to every week. And uh, I, I, I want to, I guess since we don't have we don't have no commercials right here, I want to say go to Complex and watch all eight episodes of On the Run Eating. Mm. Which is Nori's uh, show. Uh, Nori's the executive producer on it. I'm executive producer on it. Uh, he's got Amber Rose on it. Bun B, Big Boy. Uh, is this is this Big Titty Amber or, or, or Little Titty Amber? Big Titty Amber. She hadn't got the breast reduction yet. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so if you so, still want to indulge in Big Titty yeah, Amber? Yeah, yeah. So go see where those titties get all the food. from. Absolutely. So it's a different kind of food show. You know, he's just going to different restaurants, eating with your favorite celebrities, right. and it's his whole crew: Young Relly, my man Chink Bing, my man Sunny D. So go watch Nori on the run eating on. Uh, complex right now okay i just want to uh shout out some dates real quick the views from the sis tour i just did tampa thank you so much everybody who came out to the shows in tampa those were amazing we did six shows packed great audiences um shout out to the tampa improv you guys were great 
Um, and a couple of the dudes took me out drinking and got me way too drunk. Anyway, thank you. Um, but I'm going to be in Columbus, Ohio this, uh, I believe I'm going to be here Thursday through Sunday. Yeah. So I'm going to be the first through the fourth at the um, Columbus Funny Bone. So come check out shows right there at the Columbus Funny Bone if you're in Columbus surrounding areas. Then I'm going to be in Miami at the Comedy Inn, the 9th and the 10th. And then I'm going to be in Austin, Texas for the South by Southwest Comedy Festival. Not, I mean, a, a film festival. I have a movie there called Right When You Get Work. Um, so I'm excited to see that. But the 13th, I'm also going to be doing a show at the Cap City Comedy Club. One show, one night only. Spread the word. Get your tickets. Views from the sis coming. So I'll be there in Austin, Texas for that. And then I'm out of town. And um, I just released tickets to uh, the first theater date of the tour. And that is in Toronto. We're going to do Toronto at the Royal Cinema. Uh, make sure you get tickets for that. There's a link in my Insta story. Uh, link is in on my Instagram page as well. Or if you know how to just get tickets from there. I think it's up on my website as well, theandrewschultz.com. But uh, let's sell that theater out, man. Toronto, you guys have always been good for me. And I, I really just want to do it big. So we're going to go do this theater at the Royal Cinema 4-15. That's April 15th. Sunday, April 15th. And uh, let's make this shit happen, man. I'm so excited. Um, go check out theandrewshows.com for the rest of the dates. I got tons of cities on there. There's been some adjustments to dates, so make sure you got the right dates. And we're continuing to add stuff. Uh, I think we got some European stuff coming in, so I'm really excited. Thank you guys so much for supporting this. All right, let's get back to the show. Now, can I tell you how I met Oprah this week? Yes. First of all, please. I want to salute Queen Ava DuVernay. Um, I got invited to the Wrinkle in Time premiere, which I thought was dope. Because uh, my my daughter had spring break last week, okay, and I didn't really get to do a lot with her because I was working so much. I actually took her with me to Miami because she'd never been to Miami before. She's nine, so I took her to Miami because I had to talk at Florida International University. Yep. Salute to FIU, man. Good yeah. kids out there, really good kids. Really, I like I like talking to kids like that because they make me realize like the future is bright. Because sometimes yeah. you get on social media and you look at these stupid motherfuckers that's why you and you're gotta like, get oh, it's fucked up. But no, you realize that there's people out here that's really living in the real world yeah. and their future is bright. So I took her with me to Miami. She enjoyed Miami. And then um, at the last minute, I decided to go to L.A. Because I think I got the invite last week. And on Saturday, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. And I'm strange. And I'm going to tell you why I'm strange. Mm. I had the feeling that I should go. But then I looked for signs in the universe of like, wow, should I go, go? That's called anxiety. It is anxiety, but I also I also do just wait for the sign because God always shows me little signs. And this is just me. I'm on the plane. I'm sleeping. I wake up. I'm talking about literally wake up. Like, you know, your eyes just pop up. Yeah. My eyes pop open. It's a Wrinkle in Time commercial. On. And that happened when I was I was asleep. And then, like, I, I thought about in my mind, like, are you going to the Wrinkle in Time for me? And I opened my eyes and it was there. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the Wrinkle in Time for me. That's just the way. I'm just telling you how I how I identify signs in my life. That's yeah, what I saw. Yeah, yeah, So I decided to book the tickets to L.A. We go to the Wrinkle in Time premiere. Amazing event. Way too much for me. Like, I can't. I, that, that shit is way too. What you mean? I like, I, that shit is way too industry tutionalized for me. But I like, I'll keep saying, y'all, and I, I, it's weird to me now because we are the industry. Like I would always say, you know, you either of the people or of the industry, but yeah. it's people that I literally came up with. Like I've been watching grind for the past 10 years, 15 years. Like where are the people that are in these positions in the industry? Now? Yeah. So like these people are my, my friends, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's like, like these are like my actual folks, like for real, for real, yeah. from writers, the directors, the, the talent. So it's not like it was, 10 years ago, I didn't know these people that were in the game yeah. 10 years ago. But I I know a lot of these people now. But it's still a bit much. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm like, I'm not walking the red carpet or doing none of that kind of stuff. I walked in, it's like, come on, show, show me to walk the carpet. I'm like, no, I want to go in the theater. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Take me right to my seats. So we oh, go to the God. theater. But I mean, like, literally, Ava is royalty in Hollywood. So yeah. everybody, like, name somebody, I guarantee you, name a person. Oh God, I don't. I don't. Kobe Bryant was there, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Jay Z and Beyonce were there on the low. They didn't walk the carpet or nothing either. They was they was there like they were Blue Ivy cool on the low. Uh, yeah. Like I mean, everybody, Issa Rae, uh, Lena Wave, Lil Rel, Reese Witherspoon, like all oh, everybody, right? Yeah, yeah. So we go to the premiere. Great movie. My daughter loved it. My daughter freaking out over all the Disney characters that she likes that are there. And I ain't talking about Mickey Mouse. I'm talking about white kids that I have no idea who the fuck they are. <laughs> all right? But she 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 enjoys these people. Yeah, yeah. She got into a conversation with Issa Rae in the bathroom because she's talking about one of the Disney characters. And I guess one of the Disney characters is named after somebody on Scandal. So Issa was like, 
You watch Scandal? <laughs> it was a good. It was a good time, is what I'm saying. Now, I'm standing in the party, the after party, minding my business. See the big crowd. You know, it's a big crowd surrounding certain people, and this is how you know when stars are in the building. Like, like not even just stars, like iconic people. When you got a room full of celebrities, legends like Angela Bassett, or you know, um. Uh, uh, like 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 the whole cast of Blackish, Anthony Anderson, Tracy Ellis, yeah. all of these people are there. But like people are around, they're either gonna be around one or two people, the the, the 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 man or woman of the hour. So in this case, it was Ava and the cast of Wrinkle in Time, or Oprah, who's also a member of the cast of Wrinkle in Time. But when I say everybody was around Oprah, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. She had her two security people, and then it was just waves of people following her around the party. Not her team. Just people trying to just talk to her, get a selfie, whatever. I see her security say, he, he she saluted me and he said, Charlemagne's over there. To Oprah, he says it Yeah, I'm reading the lips, right? Yeah, yeah. She comes, she's rushing right towards me. Now, in this moment, I don't know what could happen. And the reason <laughs> I don't know what could happen. Wait, Oprah's rushing to you. Like like walking, walking, uh, what's the word? Walking with... Uh, Yes. Briskly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Walking with a purpose, right? Now, the reason I'm like, I don't know how this could go, because I never know how it goes yeah, yeah, yeah. when somebody approaches me. I know that yeah, I can yeah. say my last name is Pinkett, Winfrey, Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter, yeah, yeah. and I know I hold Oprah up on a pedestal. But did you reach for the knuckles? But no, listen, when I saw, I had a suit on. I was, <laughs> but when I saw Gail last summer, when I first met Gail, yeah, yeah, yeah. at uh, Ava DuVernay's house, not trying to name drop, just telling you right. the story. I, you, you tell us, yeah, yeah. 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 Gail. It was like, what's up, Charlemagne? Yeah, yeah. I enjoy what you do, but you called me and Oprah bitches. I'm like, whoa, what? that never happened. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Miss King. That never happened. And it has been proven that that wasn't me. Yeah, I still yeah. think it was Michael Sean and Envy, but that's, he neither here nor there. So I don't know how this conversation is going to go. Yeah. Oprah walks up to me and extends her arms. You know the arm extension when she's like, you get a car. Like when yeah, she's yeah, happy, yeah, yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! Yeah. And I'm like, wow. It's motherfucking Oprah yeah. Winfrey, right? Yeah. So then all of a sudden it's this big crowd that comes around us. You just start seeing pictures yeah. flash, whatever, whatever. She yeah. stands there for a moment. She gives me a big hug. And then we have a nice six to seven, eight minute conversation, you know, and, and she, she I introduced her to my wife and I introduced her to my, my daughter and my daughter my daughter starts talking to her about how she did a book report on her and when she was in pre-K and couldn't even pronounce her name and like it was just a good moment. I can't I'm not gonna tell you a lot of the things that we talked about, but Can you give us something? One um, thing? Um nah. Just one I mean, thing. She, she 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 complimented me on the way I do interviews. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. a massive compliment. Holy Absolutely. shit. Absolutely. Which which was huge. But I mean So she, she's watched your stuff. She's admitted to I don't know how much she's watched. I just know that's what she said. But I mean, you know, like put, put it like this, man. Those people Oprah and Gail them are more in tune than you think. But all these people are all watching them all are. these people are listening. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I mean it's content at the end of the day. Like, what they, they gonna do, not watch? Absolutely. Yeah. But I will say this, man, Oprah Winfrey got some of the best energy I've ever felt in my motherfucking life. Really? Oh my God. Like and I and like I, I always have to check myself and make sure it's not the moment or the person and make sure it's just the energy. And me and Oprah had a conversation long enough where I was able to take a breath and <sighs> this is Oprah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. We're talking now. We're not yeah. it's not just like a path like we're talking. Yeah. And she's asking me things. So I have to be She's interested in your life. Yeah, I have to be in point with my answers and conversation. What I was very intrigued by or impressed by was the fact that she was able to block everything out that was going on around her. Cause it was literally just. She got to be used to that. We were now. in the middle of the event. Yeah, but like she got to be used. To she got to be used to it. I wasn't. You weren't. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm yeah, like, yeah, man. Yeah. I hope my Check forehead don't six. start sweating. In the Cause I'm a sweater. <laughs> yeah. right? I'm a sweater. It's two things that happen. I yeah. either feel that trickle of sweat going down my All armpits, right. which I'm fine with. Yeah. But boy, when it gets to the head, I'm like, shit. Hit scar. Oh, I got no hand towel. God damn it. <laughs> and when you wipe like this, you know, you got to think about acne and the dirt on your hands and shit. So I'm like, oh, please don't start sweating. But I didn't sweat. Because she made me feel just that cool and just that comfortable. Yeah. And, you know, I, I took the picture with Oprah. Did you ask if you could take the picture? You and how, right. How'd you phrase that? How'd you phrase it? Because I pussied out with Charles Barkley. I wanted to ask him so bad, and I was just too much of a pussy. I said, Miss Winfrey. 
Okay. May I please have a picture? She said, I would love to take a picture. Oh, that's what you I You know what I'm saying? Oh, and we talked about her Just podcast. I told next her, time I see Charles Barkley, we talked about her podcast. Something. I talked about how, you know, her, her podcast is really dope. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. and I, I just think that that's one of the best things that she's done in her career because her whole shit is about spiritual growth. You know what I'm saying? And spiritual evolution and growing as a person. And like, she's 60 something years old and you could tell she's still figuring it out every right. day. Like she's got her core values and her core beliefs and things that she believes, but she's not afraid to grow and unlearn and learn. And that's just something that I find interesting from all her guests on her podcast. So we took the picture and I, I posted the picture the next morning. And of course, everybody was like, look at you being petty. I'm like, what are y'all? It, it, it took me a second to think about what they're talking about. Yeah, they're yeah. like, you and Oprah being petty, throwing shots at Monique. <laughs> I'm like, why do why do y'all think life works this way? <laughs> what so, was your caption? Did you mention something? I put the light. And the reason I put the light is because if you watch the movie Wrinkle in Time, which you should go see, especially if you got daughters. If you're a father, oh. that's a great daddy-daughter date. You should really take your daughter to see Wrinkle in Time. Not just because okay. the lead is a woman and a young girl of color, but because the whole movie is about a daddy-daughter relationship. It's really dope. So, I think the reason they thought that um, that you were throwing shots at Monique is because in an interview with Oprah, I think it was... Blogzilla. Was it? Yeah, Blogzilla. 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 Shout Blogzilla. Out to, Blogzilla. Shout out to Phenomenal. Blogzilla. Uh, interview with Oprah and the cast of that movie, he asked Oprah how she felt about Monique saying these things. Monique and Donald Trump. And Donald Trump saying yeah. these things. And she was like, uh, you never... What, what exactly did she say? I don't remember. I can't she was like, you never, she was like meet the darkness. you never meet the darkness. You never meet negative with negative. With that, with negative, with negative. You gotta be the light. You gotta be the light. And, and they'll, they'll come to the light. And I think... I assume that's what you were referencing. So I did think that you were being petty. But when you see the movie... You'll know why Oprah even said that. Fam, and fam, how many people saw that movie? So none far? yet. Exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> it comes out March 9th, the day that Biggie died. But like, and she's in the movie. You'll totally understand why she used that light right. and the darkness reference. So that's why I put the light. And plus, Oprah is a light. She is but a beacon of light. You can't be surprised. All I'm saying is, you know what's going on, but you can't be surprised. I'm surprised that motherfuckers that. would think I would fly all the way to L.A. To get a picture with Oprah, despite Monique. What type of evil villain do y'all think I am? Honestly, bro, I would believe you would do that. <laughs> <laughs> I would legit believe you would do that shit. That little part of you, you listen to, yo, Ma was talking some shit. Oh, what's Ma talking some shit? <laughs> I'm gonna, what's he saying? I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even know Oprah was going to be there. I, I, I kind of thought she did, but if you listen to Oprah's podcast, she said that she was going, I don't know if she was supposed to be, but they did something with her podcast on the 26th in New York. The premiere was on the 26th. And plus, I didn't think that I was going to run into Oprah because right. I, I would not walk up to Oprah. Right. I just wouldn't. Yeah. Not in that setting. Yeah. Because everybody's doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's around her. Everybody taking pictures. I would have never walked up to Oprah in that setting. If somebody took me to her, yes. But I never would have just walked up to Oprah and been like, hey, Oprah, number one, I got anxiety. All right. Number two, I don't know how she feel about me. <laughs> All right. Okay. And that's the whole point of anxiety, right? Yeah. Anxiety is getting that no. Yeah. Or getting that rejection. Yeah, yeah. What's the best way to avoid the rejection? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not pull up. Not pull up. All right. Yeah. So I wouldn't have did that. But she came to me and we had a good vibe and we had a good conversation. God, I would love I would love to ask Oprah. One, has anybody tried to take her black card? And all the time they do they, they do. challenge Oprah's blackness all, all the time I really? mean it's ridiculous really yeah. and then and what, what what is her advice for what is her advice for other people who that might happen to how you cope with that how you how That's you handle question. it question somebody write that down somebody because Oprah's doing her press for wrinkle in time yo, somebody write I, that down please write down it and ask and I, I would love if we could just talk to her just ask me I'm sure there are so many kids and I know there, there are kids that listen to this podcast that might have opinions about the world that could go against the grain of what a black man or woman is supposed to think. Yeah. And they're probably afraid to share those opinions out of fear of losing their blackness or losing their, their, you know, I don't know, whatever their card, whatever that is. So it's like, how do you have the constitution, the strength to do that? I, I on some level, I don't blame them. It's hard to, to, to be, to have your identity removed. Yeah. I mean, listen, right? man, there's no, there's no, rule book to blackness just like there's no rule book to whiteness like there's right. just no rule book to being Spanish like you know I'm a black man right and it's I think it's a privilege to be black and nobody can take that away from me just because I don't move the way you want me to move right. doesn't mean I'm any less black but people love to throw around the term Uncle Tom Coon sell out by the way yo, I really only do that to people that are successful so I kind of take it as a compliment to be totally honest with you exactly because guess what you're either gay or an Uncle Tom by the way and th there's nobody that 
gets to a certain level that people don't start saying that about right. saying that about right. like I wonder like and by the way everybody who I've seen who's tried to keep it real that shit has fucked them in the long run yeah cause, I, cause that, that whole keep it real thing isn't really keeping it real you're not keeping it real when you're playing to the crowd that's not keeping it real yeah. keeping it real is not doing what I think the mass majority of people want me to do yeah, keeping it real yeah. keeping it authentic is doing what you feel and really sticking to your guns and doing what you think. Yeah. And that's what I always strive to do. You may not always agree with it. You may think I'm wrong a lot of the time. But guess what? I'm still being my authentic self. Right. And So be, what do you say to the young kid that maybe isn't in your position just yet? Be yourself, man. I say that all the time. I told the kids at Florida International University that they keep asking me like... And when they get, But when they get pushed back, when they get that pushback from matter. their pushback peers... It don't matter. Pushback is fine. See, that's the, pro the problem with pushback is that that's why everybody is saying what people want to hear nowadays... Because they're afraid of the, of the pushback. pushback yeah. And the social media makes that pushback harsh, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so people are afraid to say something that people may disagree with because yeah. they don't want the pushback. Yeah. That's whack. Don't be afraid to have Dude, the debate, man. You know what? Don't be afraid to have the debate. And the other thing, and this is, and this is something I promise, if you stick to your guns and you have the research to back it up, don't mm -hmm. be one of these guys just saying shit and doesn't have the research. Mm -hmm. But if you have the research to back it up and you stick to your guns through the pushback, they come back on board. Yeah. Like we've witnessed, and there's a few like political pundit folks, like Jordan Peterson is one of them. Ben Shapiro is one of them. Mm -hmm. They started out, people were calling them Nazis. Ben Shapiro is like the most Jewish guy ever. Yeah. Racist, all this other stuff. And they stuck to their guns and they stayed being objective. And I've noticed this change in this cultural shift where they're like, oh yeah, he's just a kind of conservative guy and that's his thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, yeah. And have you noticed that? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I see that with anybody. I mean, because after a while, you just got to accept people for who the fuck they are. If, because it's like, you're almost like, uh, what is it, uh, pulling their collar, or like trying their street cred or something like that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like you go try somebody and they're like, yeah, what's up then? You're like, Okay, oh, yeah, you're, you're about, really about that life. You're really about that life. Yeah. Not, so, but that's why we respect people who that's really them. That's one reason we don't respect Tommy Lauren. Because it's that ain't really her. We know exactly. that's the act. Yes, yes, yes. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes. When it's really you, you may not like it, she's but you respect it. She's doing you're what you're saying. man. Don't she's keeping it, quote unquote, keeping real. it real, but it's exactly. not. Exactly. She's doing the pander. Don't pander to the audience, man. Like, listen. If, and that's how I always move. If I say something that people agree with, it cool. If I say something people don't agree with, cool. You just have to be comfortable in knowing that everybody's not going to agree with you. Like that shit is whack. Like yo, yeah. this is why I told I told the kids at uh at FIU and anybody I talk to, any of the kids I talk to, this is why this shit isn't real. The reason it's not real is because you got a bunch of people on this motherfucker pretending to be something they're not. And they're pretending to be something they're not so much that they're telling you everything that you want to motherfucking hear. How hard is it to keep up appearances all the time? And this is why these people get their cards pulled. Because when they're finally sitting down in front of somebody, they can't back up none of that bullshit that they was talking about because they didn't believe it in the first place. They was just saying what you wanted to motherfucking hear. And then that's why we respect the people that are able to back it up, regardless yep. if we agree or disagree, yep. there is a respect there. Yep. Because it's like, this is who you genuinely are. That's it. That's it. So that's, 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 that's the moral of my story that is for me. I tell everybody, man, be you. The easiest thing to do in the world is wake up every day and be yourself. Don't let social media think for you. Don't get involved in that group think. Like, have your opinions, have your thoughts. How long did it take you to develop your core values? Um, I mean, forever. For life. But guess what? My value, and oh, that's the other thing. That's, yeah, the other, yeah, yeah. that's the other thing that we should say that's very important to this conversation. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to stick to your guns for the sake of sticking to your guns. Right, 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 right. If somebody presents new information. Take in the new info, dog. And you go do your research on the new information and you realize like, oh, wow. Yeah, they were right. Yeah. It's okay to unlearn the bullshit that you learned or to not believe what it is you thought you believed because you were presented with yeah. new information that's actually valid and actually makes sense. Yeah. And that's factual. Yeah. It's okay to change your mind. That's being real too. Yeah. That's really being authentic. Being authentic is changing your mind and, and admitting that you're wrong, admitting right. that yo, you didn't get it right, whatever, whatever. And being authentic is sticking to your guns even when everybody else disagrees. Because guess what? The truth is the truth regardless of who believes it or not. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. And a lie is a lie regardless of who believes yeah. it or not. Yeah, people people lie numbers don't. Absolutely. In a, in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. There's just, I'm, I find myself searching... I'm not necessarily searching for my core values, but continually developing them. Yeah, searching for them, mm -hmm. right? Like, like I, you grow up and you're raised to be a certain way, and then you start researching and, and just learning and reading about the world, and all of a sudden, it changes the way you feel about mm -hmm. the world. You know, um, 
But I feel deep down there are certain principles that won't be changed no matter what. You know, how I feel about treating another human or how I feel yeah, about yeah, these kind of stuff like that. And I'm 34. You're 36, 37. Hell Who knows no. how old you are? 38? Yeah, almost yeah. a little older. 39? Close to 40. F- close to 40, yeah. right? So it's like, here, and, and we're talking to kids that are probably 19, 20, 22 years old, and I feel like maybe the advice is like, it's okay to not know how you feel, like, exactly how you feel about the world just yet. That's You're the still- your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you motherfuckers on social media be acting like y'all got it all figured out, and y'all don't. Yeah, we don't. And we're like, still- like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, 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 literally- Brilliant idiots. Brilliant idiots. Idiots. Yes. I, and that's what I said earlier. I don't understand how y'all get online and talk about things y'all have no clue about with such conviction. Yeah. Like, literally, y'all are arguing online about Tiffany Haddish getting $800,000 <laughs> for a Netflix deal and that's not th- not th- even the deal that's that, th- yeah. That, yeah and that's the thing you're always in the ballpark everybody's <laughs> always in the ballpark like you're, you're right you're a biscotti you're not a cookie she it got, looked like a cookie she got $800,000 for a Netflix deal but not the deal you talking about right, right. like y'all are comparing what Wanda Sykes got off and Monique got off and Amy Schumer's deal for stand up to what Tiffany Haddish got for voicing a 10 episode cartoon $80,000 yeah. a cartoon and she's executive producer getting a whole nother check no, no, like, we gotta stop great. doing yeah, that yeah, yeah, shit yeah, yeah, man yeah. we gotta stop doing that shit and we gotta start thinking even a little more deeply just back to the Monique thing for one quick second. Yeah, yeah. Monique is screaming racial bias, gender bias. She ain't screamed out one white person's name yet. Think about that. You screaming out racial bias, gender bias, but all you screaming about is black people and women. Doing well. <laughs> black people succeeded. and women that have helped you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will yeah. Packer, Steve, uh, uh, Tyler Perry, Oprah, Lee Daniels. All I'm saying is, if you're screaming racial bias, call out some of these goddamn colonizers. <laughs> right? When, when, when you gonna name some white people? That's just, I mean, that's just weird to me that nobody can, nobody pays that any attention, is what I'm saying. Yeah, they, they, these white people on Netflix are so racist and they're so sexist. Call their names. That, that they're giving multi million dollar deals to women and black and men. And black people. Hey. 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 Hey, something doesn't add up. Hey, and exactly, and when you're yeah. and when you're constantly calling but, racial and gender bias, but not calling out white people or our men that are hating on the women. Right, but I think what I think the reality of the matter is in, in this specific situation is that she would rather believe they were racist than she they believe has I'm not fallen hot. off or I'm not hot. Boom. And I think that I think this happens. A lot, and this is the problem with victimology in a lot of ways. It's an opiate, right? It makes you feel nice and cozy. Mm -hmm. You don't get a job. Oh, it's because I'm black, or oh, it's hey, I didn't, I didn't get sell my Netflix special, right? It's easy for me to go. Oh, there's a war against white men. Have you once heard me complain about that? Y'all will say that shit. No. You're lying. You, you guys you complain about it, but you, I mean, you, you say it's hard for white guys in Hollywood. You guys right say it's hard. You guys oh. say it's hard. And you guys say it's hard. And I, and I go, I go, I'm not using it as an excuse. That is true. No, I, I say, yeah, you're right. You're I'm right, not right, using it right, as an excuse. True, Will true. I say that there is a, there is a, I'll say all the time to Chris, I was like, I was like, yeah, there's absolutely, my agents even tell me, look, they don't want white guys. And I say this, Chris, do I say it all the time? Yeah. Like, my agents are, dude, they don't want white guys for shit. Yeah. We're trying to do what we can. I go out for auditions that say not white. It's like a fucking fountain from the 50s. <laughs> it just says not white. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, but, but For colors only. Exactly. <laughs> Literally, that's that's what these auditions are. And they, the auditions don't say Mexican man, black man, Asian man. The Ugh. audition says not white, which Jesus I think is, is, is odd, but whatever. My point is, even with that, my reaction to everybody has always been, I'm not using an excuse. I'm going to go do it myself. I'm going to be so undeniably hot, and I'm going to build it that that they're going to have to let me in. If they don't let me in, I'll just do it right with the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is, and that's, and that's why I give pushback with the victimology. Does race play an issue in everything in our lives? Yes. Does gender play an issue in everything in our lives? Yes. Are racism and gender, is sex and real? Absolutely. Yes. But not in every situation. Not every situation. But not every. Well, let's not if, push back on it too soon because if I don't get a chance to bow out gracefully from the Breakfast Club and we do fall off, I'm screaming racial bias, <laughs> gender bias, the plight of the black man. I'm going all in. Okay. <laughs> all, right. all I'm trying to say is like, be careful in your lives yeah. not to use that opiate, right? Not to the second you don't get a job or something like that. Not to just jump to. Ah, oh, it's because I was a woman. Don't be the boy oh, who cried wolf. I'm just because what will happen not is right now you won't do better. If Monique would look at this situation and then realistically go, oh shit, I've kind of fallen off. I need to hit the road hard or my motherfuckers, I'm Monique. By the way, I'm you, that bitch. You know it's an easy fix. 
I'm gonna be honest with you, and, and I'm not knocking her management at yeah. all. If Monique got some different management. That's a that's kind of an easy fix, especially what, right now. What would you do? I take her on the road just and go. start selling out these motherfucking that's comedy it. clubs. Caroline's in New York. Let's all go. All of these, the Laugh Factory, wherever. Start the boom, 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 boom. Do that shit for six to seven months straight. Sell this shit the fuck out. Sell this shit the fuck out. Sell this shit the fuck out. Now you got a different type of analytics. Now they're like, damn, Monique getting heating up. So now when you get this shit on, the, when you're doing four, five, six shows a weekend, and you do this shit for seven to eight months, well, you know what? Let's try doing it. Let's try. Let's try doing the Apollo by yourself. Boom. Or some type of theater by yourself. Let's yes, try it. Yeah. See what happens. You know what I mean? You start building it up slowly and slowly and slowly. Call some more. Call Adele. Get, do a Queens of Comedy again on Netflix. I ain't gonna front. I thought about that when she said that shit. I was like, because when, when she said the whole thing about the Queens of Comedy, I was like, now, they, they that would be dope to see a reunion. Because I, I thought about that when the Def Jam, the Def Comedy Jam shit came on. Boom. The 25th anniversary when Adele and uh, I don't think some more was there. Adele was definitely there, but I thought about that. I'm like, yeah, that would be kind of lit. All I'm see, saying is find, an, uh, find another way in. Yes. You got to find another reinvent way in. Reinvent yourself. Bro, it's just with, I mean. Don't reinvent yourself as the motherfucking bitter, disgruntled OG mm -hmm. that's complaining about all the new rappers you don't getting want rich to, with a dance exactly. record. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know You're saying? talking about mumble rap. Stop That's talking it, about man. mumble rap. Don't be that. Start mumbling. Don't be that. Don't be that. But you know, God bless Monique. We wish you the best. We're actually going to name this podcast "Hey My Loves." All right. <laughs> okay. And I'm not talking about this shit no more. And I also want to say that Black Hollywood is beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful, you said, bro. It's booming. Listen. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't mean, know. Listen, I'm over here. I think it's because my a fountain. I went to Ava because it was Ava. And it was wrinkling time, yeah, so yeah. everybody was out. Yeah, yeah. At the, they had it at the uh, El Capitan Theater in the middle of Hollywood. Yeah. Yo, Black Hollywood is beautiful. I mean, because it's like you got all of these different creatives. Like, yeah. to see Issa Rae walking around all week, Regal. You know what I'm saying? To yeah, see yeah. Lena, Lena Waif. I didn't, get to, I didn't get the chance to talk to Lena. I, didn't even, I saw her, but I didn't get a chance to like go holler at her. I didn't see her in the after party, but I saw her like, when I was sitting down in the balcony, I saw her like walk in and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. To see Ava in all her glory, to to see like OGs like Martin, like yo, I walked up to Mike Martin. What's up, Martin? Like Charlemagne, the motherfucking god. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he was like, I watched the Breakfast Club <laughs> all the fucking time, Ma. All right, <laughs> Martin said he watches the Breakfast Club all the time. Hey. He wants to come on the show in March because he's doing the Barclays hey. in Brooklyn. Hey, Ma, a lot of pressure on you on this next Joe <laughs> Budden podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, don't crack under this pressure, bruh. All right, because what's going to happen is people are going to listen to this, and you're going to get some people from the Brilliant Idiots that don't listen to Joe Budden, and they're going to be going to the <laughs> Budden podcast, and they're going to be like, who is this guy who thinks he's so good he could crit criticize Charlemagne the God? So those, those quips that you bring out, those hot takes, those funny lines— Welcome to the club. Now you got expectations, my well, friend. Well, but no, but Ma, like Ma, I'm not above critique. But like Joe and Rory asked you the same way I asked Monique. You know, Bring why, can't, why can't you fill out fill up an arena? Joe and Joe and Rory asked you, why do you feel that way? You didn't have anything other than an opinion, other than a feeling. But I can show you analytics that prove otherwise. And 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 once again, you said something about Monique getting a million in a day, or Joe said it, and you was like, oh, that was because it was Monique. Bro, my brother, just go look at our interviews. Like, they're all there. The numbers are there. The same way y'all don't hide numbers on YouTube. <laughs> you can go look at our numbers. Right, The numbers are right there. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Right, they're all right there. And that's what I hate about drama-filled interviews. Drama-filled interviews overshadow all the other great content. I thought, yeah. you know, Nipsey Hussle, Nipsey Hussle was my favorite interview that I've done in a long time because I just feel like Nipsey is a very well-rounded individual and mm -hmm. Nipsey is a hood dude who can speak other languages in a way that people from the hood and people from my community can understand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you see a brother like Nipsey Hussle talking about Dr. Sebi, you're going to start researching Dr. Sebi. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you hear a brother like Nipsey Hussle talking about economic empowerment and, you know, ownership and, you he's know. He's a hood dude that learned finance. He's a hood dude that learned finance. But and guess what? Yeah, Communication yeah. is important. No, because, yeah, he, you he makes be able to it talk. digestible. Yeah. This is one of the things I, I complimented Duval on. I think that I was having just a, a moment. I, he just had this really brilliant thing and I think one of the great things about um, Duval is he has oh, let me pull that up you go ahead yeah yeah it, but he takes about. there's there's an Instagram thing right and he takes complex ideas and he simplifies them in a way that's so digestible for everybody and I think a lot of people miss how complex the ideas are in the first place yeah he said um, 
And what the hell is it? All he said. Always think about the future. This is Lil Duval. Oh yeah. He said always. And by the way, ever since Duval started smoking weed, his mind is open on a whole other level. Oh. But he said always think about the future because the present was planned years ago by people that thought about their future while you was living in the moment. Now take that in. Take that in. Like listen. Can you repeat it again, just so we all? Yeah. Well, he said always think about the future because the present was planned years ago by people. The that present was planned years planned ago, years, years ago, ago by people that who thought were about thinking their future about the future. Living in the moment. Now, I tried to explain. I, I tried to explain this to y'all a couple podcasts ago, but I don't know if y'all caught it. When I talk about Nori's show, right? <laughs> Sean, no. taking credit for what you no, no, but, but you, 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 I love but no, you. But no, think about it. Think about it. I love you. Nori's show came out February twenty eighth. Remember, I was talking about how I love you, bro. We started this process three years ago. Yes, 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 you know yes, 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 yes. So everything, and remember, I said that a lot of things you you guys are seeing now. Yes, yes. we've been playing this a year ago, two years ago, right, right, right. three years ago. Like none right. of this is just spur of the moment. Right. When you see Charlemagne pop up with his new talk show, yep. Whether it's late night, whether it's daytime, right. Whatever it's gonna be. I've this been, is five years. I've in been the playing making. this, this is, baby. Yeah. I can tell. And guess what? When when it happens, yep. I'll tell you all about meetings I had literally five right. years ago. Right. Because you know what people sit back and do. They sit back and they go, yeah, that guy's talented. But they sit back and wait and see what you do. Mm. So if you remain you remain consistent over the past five years, not just remain consistent, you continue they to grow. They can trust you. They can trust like, your product. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're a little more well-rounded, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like they can see it in you. So everything that you're seeing people do you know, now. You know what Warren Buffett looks at in a company? There's what? one thing. What? He All he looks at is longevity. Yeah. He goes, has this company existed for a long amount of time and been reasonably, uh, it didn't even have to be profitable, like bro broke even, but been there for a while. What that means is that people fuck with it for a long amount of time. And yeah. he's like, I can always shave off 10% of costs. Yeah. I can find profit in it, but are they consistent for a long amount of time? Nowadays when investments though to get rich though, you do have to take the chance on that dude hot shit. Well, he's a billionaire. No, he's fine. But, but, but you, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Fine. It's he's one fine. of those things like it goes right to, to what you're saying. You set this in motion a long time a ago. A long time ago. These we different prepared. networks are watching you. Yes. Everything you see now, I promise you, we was in the pipe two, three years ago. Yeah. Maybe I'll do a show on a smaller network to sh to get myself, uh, to get my feet wet in hosting a TV show, see what it's like, get my experience. That's it. I wonder if you did that. Of course, Man, Charlemagne and Friends, Uncommon Sense. sense. Dude, it, it, what do you think? Hold on. You think in that moment all I was thinking about was that? No, I was oh, definitely thinking about that because I wanted that to be successful. But it's also preparation. Preparation for, for the next thing. What the fuck? I didn't just come out of nowhere and start doing the Breakfast Club. Like we was, I was doing radio for a long time before that. This is the fourth radio station I work at. All I'm saying is, everything that you're doing now, if you're smart, should prepare you for the future. And you got to start planting those seeds for the future now. Monique should have done that comedy special for free. <laughs> no, if she, she cared no. about the future, no, she should. Just no. think about it. Just think about no, it. No, she shouldn't. But I would. I could tell you this. What's up? Uh, she should have negotiated for a little bit more than a half a million because she did deserve more than a half a million. Well, she should have did that shit. Yeah, busted ass on it and then charged. Had everybody come in to see it on Netflix. Come do your press run about that shit and tell everybody you feel like you got lowballed. But guess what? You know you've been blackballed in this industry, but Netflix giving you a shot. So you like fuck it. I'm gonna show y'all while I'm still Monique, the queen of motherfucking comedy, the most decorated comedian alive or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. then. On the next one, you stick everybody the Bang. fuck up. Boom, done. You stick everybody the fuck up. Everybody. They either pay you now, they pay you a lot they more later. They pay you later. Boom. But they're going to pay you. They're going to motherfucking pay you eventually. Trust me. I'm proof of that. You think when I started the Breakfast Club, I was making the money I'm making now? What you making when you started? I'll tell you, $125,000. For the whole year, you're working five days a week. $125,000, which was the most money I had ever made in radio yeah. thus far. I had never made that amount of money in radio. Yeah. Ever. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm like, okay, great. Plus, I was unemployed. Yeah. So that shit was that's everything. That's amazing when you go from zero to 125. 125. <laughs> that's, that's you know a what lot. I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all another story. You read it in my book. If you didn't, if you hopefully if you read my book, yeah. You know, I mean, it was on the New York Times bestsellers for seven weeks in a row. So a lot of jewels in this podcast, hopefully, boys hopefully and girls. You read the book. A lot of jewels. But I tell a story in the book how when I got fired from Wendy Williams' show, yeah. And then six, seven months later, 100.3 to beat in Philadelphia wanted to hire me to do mornings. Now I had never done morning radio. Yeah. Wendy's husband, Kevin, uh, was like, nah, we're going to go down there and get $250,000. That's how much you should be making. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. It is uh, 2009. Uh, I just got fired November 3rd, 2008. 
uh, America is in this thing called a recession. <laughs> all right, <laughs> motherfuckers got hiring freezes. People are getting laid off by the thousands. Yeah, I'm gonna take this little seventy thousand dollars and go do radio in Philadelphia. Yeah, that's why we had initially had a falling out. And I don't. I'm, I'm happy that he felt like I was worth that much. But you gotta pay attention to the climate around you. Right. I had to be motherfucking realistic. I had never did mornings ever in my life. Yeah. I had nothing. Nothing to show that I could be successful in mornings. They're me, taking a shot at they're on you. They taking a shot at me. For, taking a shot on me for me to go down there. I'm not going down there and fucking this shit up by asking for twenty fifty thousand right. dollars. I believed in myself so much yeah. that I knew I would go there and do what the fuck I had to do, and I'd eventually get paid more. Now I never got paid more in Philly because only lasted nine ten months, and I got fired. But I had the number two rated show in the motherfucking city, so Power One Hundred Five in New York was paying attention. They was like, "This little motherfucker." went up there and had the number two motherfucking morning show in the city in, in, a, in a PPM market. PPM is the new rating system. So clearly he knows how to do this shit in a PPM world. Yeah. So what did that do? It gave me numbers for the next situation. Now they know I can do it. So, so like, now you have something to show. There you go. And that's all God That's all God wanted for me to get out of that situation was to show people that I could do shit online because I've always been doing this internet shit. So the Cassie interview or the, uh, right. the whoever whoever the fuck. I don't remember who else I interviewed while I was there, but the Cassie interview is one I remember in particular. Yeah. But people saw that I could create these moments and they saw that I could get numbers. So that's what made Power 105 one hire me. So that's always been my mentality. Same thing when I, went, when I worked with Wendy for free for a year and a motherfucking half. For free, because I knew that if I did what I was supposed to do there, I could write my own ticket. The situation with Wendy led me to end up getting the situation in Philly. Mm -hmm. Philly ended up getting me at Power 1051. I took that motherfucking money, $125,000, three-year contract. After two years of the Breakfast Club, they was like, you know what? I think we should uh, renegotiate. You know, you're doing your thing, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I got... A lot more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when that contract was up, Time to which hit is him. the one I'm on now. Time to hit hey, baby. Hey, <laughs> goddammit. Hey. That's all I'm fucking saying. You know what I mean? We moving out to Jersey, baby. So there you go. We moving about, yeah, but now we've no, got way out to yeah, Jersey. We bought, some, like, bought, bought a house. Right? That's all, but that's all I'm saying right, is right. you got to show and prove through actions and deeds, not words and lip service. I've never yeah. been the type to just run around and talk about what I'm not getting or what I what, what, what I feel like I deserve. I'm going to go out there and show you, motherfucker. Yeah. You're going to pay me. So, yeah, she could have done that. Yeah. She could have done that. That's all I'm saying. Go show it. It's there. It's... I think, uh, it's, yeah, I, I don't think know. that's enough. Hot ninety minutes. Oh man, that's we gave him a hot ninety minutes. Gave, oh, one, one more thing, Chris. Shout out Van's podcast. Oh yes, listen, Van got a podcast. I've, I haven't listened yet. Have you listened? Uh, I listened to. Um, it's something about how it's really hard to be black in Hollywood or something. No, no, the first one was with Tay Diggs. I listened to the one with uh, yeah. Tay Diggs. I haven't listened to. Now the, is not the time for that. I haven't listened to the one with Dame Dash. I think that Dash. he didn't time. I think he didn't Dame time Dash that episode. Really he dropped an episode about how it's hard to be black in Hollywood. No, 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 no. The no, biggest not what it was about. movie in the history, the biggest opening weekend in the history of movies, is an all black cast. I'm gonna say what I like about Andrew. This is, this, is, this is what I like about Andrew. Andrew plays through the foul. Right? Right. Andrew I kept going. That's what I like about one, Andrew. Baby, no, listen. He go. kept going. He plays through the foul. No, that's what wasn't it about. Tate Diggs was actually talking no, about how I'm teasing. I'm, it I'm, used making to be, a, I'm making a joke. No, I don't even think it was about it being hard in Hollywood. It was the fact that they, I, he feel I think like he was having a white wife was what he was really talking about. How people judged him, be, had an image of him. Because he was married to a white woman. Yeah, and he said that he would never mess with white women ever be ever again because of it. Yeah, yeah he did. He definitely, he definitely Wait, he said got, that. he got broken? Yeah. Yeah, he got broken by the hey, people. He thinks it derailed his career. Media, man. Yeah. Keep it consistent. Social you stick media. with your white bunnies, Word okay? Your snow bunnies or whatever they're called. And he talked about how they, he feel like they didn't get what they should have gotten out of the game when they had the first black renaissance in Hollywood. You know what I mean? Cause I, and that, and that, was, that was a very interesting conversation for me to hear because right. in my mind... In my world, black shit was popping. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I loved every, the Cosby Show, Different World, Living Single, Martin, right. the movies like Minister Society, uh, Boys in the Hood, Juice. But then when you get older and you look at the numbers, you realize like, oh yeah, those weren't blockbusters, were they? No. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, I mean, Cosby was a monster. Different World was a monster. Cosby was the biggest that, show. Those were huge. Yeah. Martin was big. All that shit was big. But I'm just talking about like, it was just certain things that was so big to us at the time. They just weren't, big and mainstream. Right now, with this black renaissance, this shit that's out here is is mainstream. Insecure, Atlanta, Black Panther. I would say Black Panther is mainstream. The Shy. I, I don't know if the others are mainstream. Absolutely. And and, and I'm going to tell you why. I, I, we, we just have to go off numbers, Charlamagne. And and the difference is, like, you, know, you know, the difference between uh, Insecure, which does respectable numbers, it's a good TV show, but like, 
Also, the show Crashing, which is a white show, is not mainstream. Like, people might, might have heard of it and they watch it, but they're not watching it like they're watching Big Bang Theory or Game of Thrones. I'll tell you why Insecure and is mainstream. Do you know what I mean? Because, number one, they got all the mainstream press. And number two, the awards. But They but, clean up during awards. But season. here's the thing. That's what we mess up is like, oh, and this is the thing about the awards, is awards reward a lot of times these movies that are these like kind of indie or small or cool or like bloggers in New York and L.A. write about it. But the mainstream, when we're talking mainstream, I assume we're talking about like all across America, right? We're talking about yes. Black Panther success. Like that's fucking mainstream. Like billion dollar movie franchise, Avengers. Like this shit is fucking mainstream. I think Insecure in the Land is definitely out there like that. I... Blackish, all that shit. Absolutely. Well, I guess we just gotta decide what the number is to make something mainstream. If it's yeah. three hundred, I mean, like to be honest, girls wasn't mainstream. It's just written about and talked about so much, but only three hundred thousand people would That's watch it. Mainstream to me, though. I, okay, so is it? It's mainstream because people in New York and L.A. write about it. But if you go to Missouri, right. they're like, I don't give a fuck about girls. I'm watching Black Panther. So, dog. What, with that said, so what is mainstream then? I think mainstream is when you have because them shows cross, on CBS. Rate high as a motherfucker. That's mainstream, dog. Yeah, but we don't fuck with them. They don't because, have they don't have the yo, culturally cool yo, shit. But check it, because we're the minority. I, I know it's hard. It's it's like New Yorker in LA where like we think that we're the only thing that exists. But when you go to the middle of the country, they're like, no, I'm watching Big Bang Theory, dog. I'm, I'm watching NCIS. That's twenty right. million I, behind I, I, I'll that. I'll tell you, I'd rather have a healthy balance of both. I'd rather be culturally cool and have a few Agreed. million people watching. And really, that's to me. That's making impact and moving. I just want to make great forward. content. I don't care. Like to me, it's about you know. If people watch it, that's awesome. If they don't watch it, you know, that's that's a bummer. But I want to make great content. I don't want to make a, a hit show that I hate doing. Yeah. You know. But, but I'm just saying, as we define the word mainstream. It is when everybody across the country is watching it, like Black Panther. The reality is, it's not just LA and New York watching Black Panther. You're right. North Dakota watching Black Panther. I mean, the world. I mean, I'm gonna give you like, just, I'm gonna tell you why. What, what else? Like, NBC is considered mainstream, right? Some shows don't do well. That's what I'm saying. I I loved the Carl Michael show. Right. Carl Michael show didn't have the cultural impact. Insecure had. Atlanta had. Blackish had black, but even though Blackish is on a major network with ABC, even something like Grownish, Grownish is on Freeform. That shit comes on tonight. That shit, pay attention to your Twitter tonight. You'd be like, what the fuck is Grownish? That shit trends crazy wow. every Wednesday. Fifteen thousand, twenty thousand tweets. People just talking about this thirty, twenty-two minute show. Right. So it's just like this is us mainstream. Yeah, oh, absolutely. absolutely. That's yeah, yeah, mainstream. Yeah, 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 you see what I'm absolutely. saying? Like, but it got both though. Yeah, but that's the yeah, difference. Yeah, you feel me? Absolutely, like, absolutely, like, absolutely, like absolutely. just because something's mainstream doesn't mean it has to alienate me and you. Yeah. Because Black Panther and This Is Us, we fuck with, yeah. and it's also mainstream. All I'm saying is that's the difference between. This is a good conversation because yeah. there's some people who will watch Blackish, who watch Insecure, who watch Atlanta, who don't watch This Is Us, and be like, "What the fuck is that shit?" Right. But but that don't mean that This Is Us ain't the biggest shit on TV. It's fucking massive. That, I, no, yeah, I agree yeah. with you on that. Because even, like, even I was talking to Sinbad this morning about Russell Peters and, and Monique. And I was like, Russell Peters is the, the biggest Sinbad. touring motherfucker yeah, out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And But it's some people that'll be like, how he get more money than Monique? <laughs> <laughs> but that's just because they don't know. Did, wait, Sinbad doesn't know how popular Russell Peters is. No, he does uh, know. Russell he Peters didn't say is. that. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying we were talking ah, about yeah, in general yeah, 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 how yeah. people will say that. Right, right. I mean, listen, I, but me personally, I would rather have... Good numbers that can keep the numbers that can keep you on TV, and then create the content you want to create. And, and I want you want to create. I want, yeah, I want to be culturally relevant, culturally cool. I want to have that impact. Right. Where people are like, "This is the bar for shows." Right. Like, like this shit is really good creatively. But that's what they say about this is us, which is amazing. Which well, you rarely some get. shows get both. Like Game yeah. of Thrones gets both. Your Game of Thrones gets both. Right. Like Game of Thrones is. I the, think Game of Thrones mainstream. Game yeah, of Thrones is mainstream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he said, no, he said it very calm, like, okay, this motherfucker's stupid. Yeah. Game of Thrones, Game no, of Thrones no. Mainstream. But I'm saying, like, like, because Game of Thrones gets the Rolling Stone articles, absolutely. They get the New York Times articles, the awards, right? And they'll get the awards, yeah. right? But but also people all over the country watch it. Whereas there are certain shows, the Insecure is going to get the Rolling Stone article, is going to get New York Times. Right, but Blackish like, is, is the best probably thing. a more mainstream. But Blackish show than is insecure. more mainstream. Yeah, I like, agree with that. Just more yeah. and. It's just, it's very rare, but sometimes both of those fucking worlds meet, and then you get a This Is Us, you get a, like, I think Lost was one of those kind of shows, yeah. like, you get those shows that are just... Unbelievable. The, and they speak to the culture, they speak to... When you can make a reference from a show, and everybody understands it. <laughs> that's what that's it. That's what you're mainstream. And I'm talking about people understand My it. My dad yeah. understands Empire, it. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Empire is mainstream. Empire, Empire, wait, well, yeah, I think Absolutely. there was a moment, I think the Empire had a moment. Uh, maybe it kind of fall, fell off a little bit, but I think there was a moment. It's still there, though. It was. It's still on. 
It is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Empire still on. I mean, it was the big. It was think, white hot at one point. Yeah. There was one point where it was that was the show. That was the show. Like you had white people walking up to you Mainstream. saying, "So, uh, did you see Empire yeah. last night?" <laughs> and that, that was the black icebreaker for a long time. <laughs> now, now it's Black now Panther. Now Black Panther. Now it's Black Panther. Yeah. Now it's yeah, yeah, yeah. white people coming. <laughs> I was doing that at the comedy club <laughs> <laughs> when I was about. I did that for people okay, up right, and okay, just okay, walking okay. out. Knock the fuck off. <laughs> By the way, I saw Mbaku. Who Jabari? Winston, that Duke? leader of the yeah, Winston at the Duke. goddamn yeah. uh, Cass. At, I saw him at um. <laughs> That's what we said. I saw him at the Rickland Time Premiere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That motherfucker looks like Safari's dick. That motherfucker <laughs> is huge. All right, and I haven't even seen Safari's dick, but I can only imagine Safari's dick looks like <laughs> Safari's Winston dick Duke. hanging up in the mountains. My <laughs> God, man, that motherfucker is like six seven. And, really? Yes, and he said he had to cut thirty pounds. Because he bulked up for the role. Right, so he's right, right. big as shit. I'm yeah, like, yeah. you He are... was phenomenal. Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. I walked up to him and gave him that, and boom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want no problems. <laughs> like, that <laughs> motherfucker is How'd big you lose to Chadwick? <laughs> what? How? Like, no, seriously. You got choked out by Chadwick. By the way, yeah, yeah. when you see him in real life and yeah. see Chadwick in real life, that's right. how you know how unrealistic it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Without them the superpowers, yeah, yeah. Mubaka would have beat the shit out of T'Challa. Son, there's a reason why they're fighting in water. And listen, he didn't have superpowers in Fought when you fought, ooh, because you don't see their feet yeah, in water. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. that was a brilliant. It you, was visually stimulating, but at the same time, how can we have these two guys battle without Chadwick looking five six? In real life, he never beats that guy without superpowers. Right, but smart the way they did it, right? It, but you didn't even yeah. in the movie you don't realize the size difference, right? Or right. maybe I just I've seen it three times and did not notice. I knew he was bigger. Yeah, yeah. In real life, yeah, yeah. Winston Duke. <laughs> It's a far He got a big dick name. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you don't got a big dick with the name Winston and Duke, I'm telling you, come man. Come on now. All right, man. Come on. Listen, thank y'all for listening. We really appreciate y'all, man. Everybody that supports the Brilliant Idiots every week. Um, and just thank you, man. You know, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're right. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit.